Welcome to the Aceman, everybody. It's time to go behind the funny. This is Scott Higgins. And this is Ace Aceto. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for downloading us. Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate it so very much. And if you have a moment, please give us that five-star written review wherever you download your podcast. It's a great way to help the podcast. If you want to help us out another way, tell a friend. We all learn about podcasts from our friends' recommendations, and that's a way you can help us out by recommending us to a friend. And the last way, if you really enjoy the show, is to go to our Patreon page and become a patron. And that is at www.patreon.com forward slash behind the funny. And what that will get you, it's one simple giving level, $5 a month. That will get you a T-shirt or a mug, some sort of merchandise, as well as unlocking bonus content that only our patrons can access. Thank you so much for supporting us. If you want to reach out, you got a question for us, you got a comment, anything, please send us an email at behindthefunnypod at gmail.com. And now, enjoy the show. Be careful, he's... he's And and Scott Higgins, both of them coked up out of their minds. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, listen to you. you. (laughs) Down in the basement. Oh, I love that. I think we should call this the acement. The acement, yes. Yeah, what do you Whoa. think there, huh? I like that. I the really acement do. studios. Oh. Excuse me, I'm drinking beer. Hold on a second. We, we usually drink bourbon on our end <laughs> yeah, right. the podcast, so That's all right. feel free to enjoy yourself. Yeah, exactly. You, you shoot an eight ball if you want. We don't care, as long as it's good stories. <laughs> And welcome to Behind the Funny. This is Scott Higgins, your host, and with me as usual, Ace Aceto. Hey, hey. Hey, Ace. Hey. Glad you can make it tonight. (laughs) I literally just sat in traffic from East Boston to here. I left there at quarter of four. And it is now six thirty something. I know because this was your your this is standstill. I was. This I, is I've your big chest, night. I know. I've been very excited about this. I've had chest pain the whole way down here. Uh, luckily, Charlie. Luckily, you probably have you know, some stuff in your trunk that'll take care of yeah, that. Yeah, right? no. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't. I don't. Sorry. I don't carry any good no, samples. No samples anymore. or anything. <laughs> no. I get some nitro right on me. Yes, really? <laughs> of course you do. I, a few years ago. I only I only came for the free samples. Yeah. Case, so. <laughs> Well, you're gonna I'm, I'm gone, Charlie. Oh wow, that was the shortest interview ever. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, huh? <laughs> so, so for those who uh, are listening that may or may not recognize the voices, uh, Scott and I are extremely excited to have the King and the other King, the Kings, the Kings. Of Rhode Island, of Rhode Island comedy, uh, the royalty, the royalty. Yes. So yes. you know when you when you talk about uh, comedy in Rhode Island, and we do, by the way. Uh, have listeners in other countries, so we're exposing them to you know so much more than I, I'm hoping to what open up the Singapore market for the, you. I, wasn't it? Well, was it Myanmar, Myanmar. 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 Like I got it, it down now. We're yeah, close. Frank, I got Myanmar. Yeah, he called it Myanmar. <laughs> Myanmar. Myanmar. I, I said Manny Mar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is, which it, sound, it sounds like it's inside a fantasy land in Disney it, World. It's, or something. it's actually a neighborhood in New Bedford. <laughs> yes, even better. It's even better than trying to say Smithsonian. I'm at the Guam Comedy Club all next week. Are you? Just to throw it in. So this is already running off the rails. And per you usual, haven't even we haven't them even yet. introduced them. But oh, here's here's crap. how this started. Let's take that back. So even if you don't re- if you recognize or don't recognize the voices, uh, Scott and I were talking about some of the past podcasts and some of the most downloaded podcasts. Uh, and one of them was a trip down Rhode Island comedy memory lane, and that was where we had Rock and Joe and and. Uh, and John Parada, myself, and Scott just talking about you know Rhode Island comedy, how we got our start, starts, and the names that consistently keep coming up whenever you talk about the beginning, the Genesis, the Old Testament of, <laughs> <laughs> of wow. Rhode Island comedy. You get these two names. And on the seventh day, Periwinkles was done. That's right. There we yes. go. So, uh, so without further ado, uh, we are so excited to have Frank O'Donnell and Charlie Hall here in the 
illustrious studio comedy bunker. <laughs> if we're, the if comedy we're doing basement. Old Testament, can I be Beelzebub? Sure, yeah. <laughs> or as Scott would we refer have, to him, Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. Bill. <laughs> well, I don't He's know if I'd say it more. that clear. We have we have Cain and Abel, uh, <laughs> Adam and Eve. No, no, uh, no. You know, I think I would be Adam um, and Steve. <laughs> Adam and Steve. <laughs> Is it Lazarus? Yeah, Lazarus. I died so many times and still came back. <laughs> yeah, but that's New Testament. But, you know, it's, it's, it's close. It's a, yeah. it's, it's, oh it's a Bible. It's, uh, so we're, we're just so excited to have you guys. Because, you know, one of the things that, that came up was none of us really know prior to when we started – what was you know what was it like how did the mm-hmm. whole comedy scene get started what? was there i've never heard of any comedians in this state before you two and i don't know if there yeah, were so like so like for for instance how long like Frank, how long have you actually been performing stand-up? Because, I mean, you do other things. You do theater. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you have a lot of different talents. But actual stand-up, how long have you been Since doing Since 1982. That? Charlie and I started at roughly the same time. Okay. He started a little bit before I did. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. This you starts with, with you Nick. and Mike, Mickey. Well, yeah, no, no. The, you had started with Nick already, and then I started with Mickey. It was you, all around periwinkles, but you were already doing that stuff in Newport with Nick Kaneo. Um, a key, Are you sure? A key to yeah. walking down memory lane is remembering, <laughs> actually remembering <laughs> this it. This is the we forefathers. Are, we are, we Welcome are, to the Alzheimer's episode. We are now in our 60s, so some of this may not be true anymore. <laughs> well, make it up. <laughs> no, so, he, Charlie had been doing some stuff with Nick Kaneo. You did that right, stuff okay. in Newport. And when Perry and Winkle started, it wasn't a comedy club. It was just a performance club. Oh, okay. And I was writing stuff for JB105. Yep. They started doing a talent night at Noah's Arcade. Noah's Arcade. Oh, and okay. um, one of the DJs, uh, Mike Waite, uh, said, you know what? We're doing this talent contest. And went, nobody does any comedy. Why don't you come down and do some comedy? I said, eh, no, I just, I wanted to be a writer. And that's what I told him. Right. And he kept on me. And he kept saying, come down, come down, come down. So I said, all right. I set a date three weeks out. I started, I sat down and I started writing material. I wrote 15 minutes worth of material. Wow. And got exactly two laughs. <laughs> which is still that's, my current ratio. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, it worked out well. Two every 15. <laughs> that's okay. not bad. Okay. It was the worst was it? ever. But I got, it was pretty cool because the two laughs were enough to keep me going. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one was a joke that I'd written, and one was something that I came up with off the cuff. Yep. Um, I have transitioned into... Uh, Everything I do is mostly off the off cuff. The cuff it's yeah. very rare for me to do material yep. or something that from what might be called my act. Um, my son likes to bust my chops. I blame his mother um, <laughs> about it. He said, Dad, you don't even have an act. I said, yeah, I know, but I can still talk for 45 minutes. That's right. <laughs> and and so make people kinda, laugh. It's kind of cool. And nobody misses signs. your material more than the Jews on KTEL. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. was one of his up. old bits. Oh, yeah. okay. It was. <laughs> and it was not offensive, but it no. almost got me band so you know what are you gonna do so it started so, with this talent night yeah and yeah. i went and i did the material and then yeah. charlie did you show up that same night or did you show up like a, a, I don't know. a following week i don't know and it's like we and we went to high school together so oh, we're so both, you guys knew each other before oh yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, and we right. you know we hung out a little bit you yep. know during college i was at pc he was at uh <coughs> RISD. RISD. Yep. and you know every once in a while we'd get together and uh, go watch a movie or something right uh, we were the champion beer drinking team, by the way. Hey, what, uh, Frank? What, what, what was that? <laughs> no, just, they, that, the whole that explains the memory. Be Frank, <laughs> <laughs> the whole episode is going to be Frank telling the story and Charlie going, Charlie going really? really? I don't remember that. <laughs> what? I could have phoned this. <laughs> Wait a minute! You guys did that to me when I went to see The Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should just record it a car of him just going, "What? What? Who? Who? No, just no, keep that was, randomly pressing it." That was actually so, a planned. What? What? Of so Frank could tell the story that, that a bunch of us got. To, we used to drink beer. That drinking yep. age was eighteen in those days. Back yeah. then, yeah. Which meant, of course, sixteen in those days. <laughs> so <laughs> we're at classical high school, 13. and we decided to start a beer drinking league. League. Yeah. We Who did. had the idea? <laughs> Uh, should we name them? Yeah. I mean, Angelo Musco, I think, wasn't oh, it? Oh, okay. No. And we had teams of what, three? Three of us, and I think there were six teams, and um, we were the Amazing Alkies. <laughs> the Amazing Alkies? Yeah, Charlie, Charlie Alky Alky Hall, Hall wow. Frank the Tank, O'Donnell, and Ed Brewery Burke. And oh I had God. made up a sheet, I think, yeah. of where the first 
we picked three locations, yep. and we had two against two against two, yep. and uh, it was just like a real league yeah. and everything. <laughs> they and, been uh, drinking Roger serious. Goodell was the, our, our commissioner, <laughs> and for, but we were late. My team was late because Frank had to work at the market. The market. And the tell market. them what happens. We pick you up a little bit late. We're, we're, we're already behind by like five beers. Everybody yep. else. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, person from the other team hands me a beer. I down it and hand it right back. And he yep. goes, what would you do with the beer? I said, well, I drank just it. Drank He's it. looking around see if I spilled it. <laughs> Give me another one. I put it right down, and he gave it back, and he quit. He stopped drinking right there. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we won. So wow. we, we, were the, we were the champs. And so, but anyway, we knew each other from high school. And yep. uh, just, you know, here he comes in to do comedy, and you were with Nick. I was so with Nick. Yeah. Nick, Nick Caneo okay. was this blind uh, guy that used to work for the city of Providence yep. with, with me in the recreation department. Mm-hmm. And we used to work at this place called Camp Cronin for senior citizens down the beach. We used to have fun, make them laugh. And, and Nick and I got into this little kind of a comedy routine. Yeah. And we had done our act at a place in Newport. And it went over great. Went well. And we decided to venture on out to Noah's Arcade. For this contest, and yeah. lo and behold, who's there but Frank O'Donnell? And and so, yeah. did you guys know that you were like, because were you on the beer league at this point? Oh no, no. Oh, no, this that was, was before. That was way before. Okay, we, we were out of so college. So you just by hadn't then. seen yeah. each other in a while, and no, we all both of a sudden, graduated. Yeah, uh, yeah. Their livers had given in by then, so they, <laughs> oh, they no, moved no, on. They have oh, no. <laughs> He's like, "Where's the beer right now, buddy? I'll show you." I already asked coming in. And <laughs> yeah, he said. You said the tap's working, it. right? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Shit, <laughs> we're gonna start doing this at a bar. It's gonna be so much more fun." We should. I heartily endorse. All right, but Frank went to. PC, which is always a big beer drinking uh, yes. uh, school anyway. Mm-hmm. But uh, when, now when you were at PC, did you do anything remotely like comedy no. or anything no. at all? No. I, I mean, I started out in pre-med. Well, I was going to be a doctor. Were you really? Yeah. Where, and, were, where were the places that you performed at before there was like Noah's Arcade and that was it? That was, it. That was, that was the I only mean, place around. First time you what walk the, in? What was the place in Newport that you guys did? I you forgot were, the name of the place in Newport. But when I was a junior at... Uh, at RISD, another friend of ours who also went to classical named Peter Thornton mm-hmm. and yep. I were we, we like very I, much kind of became a little comedy team at RISD. Yeah, uh, we were both in illustration. And one year for a Christmas party, uh, we thought we'd have some fun with this boring illustration class. You know, these artists. And, so we had done uh, like a slideshow and with funny captions. Yep. You know, like that formula, pretty easy. And we killed. They yep. loved us. Yeah. And I got this in my blood. I never felt this before. Mm-hmm. And then we did it again the next year uh, because neither of us were voted the funniest guy at Classical. No. Right. Um, no, well, actually, it was kind of funny. We performed at our 10-year reunion. Oh, and because people by came then, up yeah. to us afterwards. And, and I mean, they, I remember somebody said this to me. I forget who it was. He said, you know. Frank, you know, we always knew Charlie was funny, but you? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, thanks. Well, thanks a lot. <laughs> right, yeah, wow. right. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's kind of funny and, and may deserve a little bit of attention. Is that what, what is it in me, what is it in Frank, what is it in you two guys that made you become a comedian? As I think back, I, I used to love to watch the Johnny Carson monologues. I used yeah. to love to watch Merv Griffin, Toadie Fields, with or without her legs. Yeah. Uh, they were... <laughs> Uh, Alan King, remember Alan yeah. King? Oh yeah, you oh, yeah. Know, that you remember. Survived by his wife. Uh, yeah, and uh, as I as I think then, I I always was a comedian in the closet. Anybody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you came out of the closet. As Bueller. A okay, fine. Okay. Bueller. Um, so it, it was somehow in there. Yeah. And well, and and so we've talked about it with pretty much just about everyone that has come in here. Yeah. When we talk about how they got their start, that's exactly what they say. They're like, I went up on stage. I either had a bad set mm-hmm. or a good set. But either way, I got off stage and I was like, I need to do that again. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, yeah. F- you feel like, all right, even if I only got one laugh yeah. in that five-minute set, I like that feeling. You well, feed off there you, of it. There you go bragging. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I got more uh, laughs than you did no. for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> one yeah, laugh yeah, in yeah. five yeah. minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, mean, Chris Rock. I'm, I'm, look, then, I you didn't do the math clueless. fast enough. We were yeah. clueless when we showed up at Periwinkles. Yeah. Frank had done some, mm. you know, Frank seemed like it was okay. There was Mickey. What's the name? Mickey who? Mike Olson. It was uh, Mike Olson. Um, Michael yeah. Olson. He had at least, and yeah. uh, 
I used to perform, and just mm-hmm. like Frank's story, I remember yeah. going up and perform, and I was filthy. TV programs that you got that maybe you'll see in the future, and uh, I, I I remember I was being I was I was filthy, and I no I didn't get a laugh. I remember going home a couple of times, actually crying. Yeah, Cry, yeah, yeah crying. And then the next, I'm never going up again. And then the next day, well, maybe it wasn't all that bad. And then <laughs> yeah. the third day, um, oh, screw this, I'm going to write. So, by the fourth day, you know, I was back I'm up back. there on yep. stage. And it was yep. a cycle every single time. Yep. You guys must go through that, too, when you die. Yeah. And you have a bad set. Oh, absolutely. Like, why, do I, why am I in this business? Yeah. And then I've, as the days go on, you, you want to be I, I've said there. before, it's like this bad karma that you got to get off your back when you have yeah. that bad set. Mm-hmm. And it bothers you until you get back on stage and get the, uh, those laughs that gets rid of that, just that, that cloud that's hanging yeah. over you that, that whole time. It'll, it'll bother you for a week until yeah. you can find a spot. Yeah, you've you said it before. And, like if you have a bad set on a yeah. Saturday night, you're trying to find an open mic on Sunday or Monday <laughs> just yeah. to get the bad taste out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Mon- Look, I know this is an AA meeting, but can I do time? Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, Excuse father, me, Father. Before you yeah. do the service. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. You mind if I say a few words? Yeah. That's why All right, a- after the host? All right, yeah, right, I got you then. That's actually why I'm a lector. I can do it anytime I want. You can do whatever you want, yeah, right? Yeah. Nice. Father, sit down. I got a couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay, so, so we it's this it's this <clears throat> talent contest, yep. and we go back every week. If Frank and I become regulars, and we all get better and better at writing. There's a cast of characters that shows up this uh, Joanne Charpentier, who yeah. shows up singing, uh, what a rim, what I mean. And, and, and there's different but, people. But not, but not quite that well. No. <laughs> and there's uh, regulars that show up. And usually the talent contest was won by the girl in the wet t shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah well, so it was the 80s. Like, well, so, it, it's yeah. like, no, you know, Frank, with, you know, you're no, wrong. Well, I remember that. Do you know I know how, you don't maybe, remember, but, but I do. Know how often? <laughs> All of a sudden, Charlie's memory is kicking in. The meds are coming in. <laughs> That's good. Took, he woke up. He's yeah. good now. You know who used to win more often than not? Joe Cabral doing right. the national anthem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, she, right. oh, yeah. But when Joe he Cabral. wasn't there, the wet T-shirt That's girl true. won all the time. Oh, and, when yep. Joe, and when Joe was wearing a wet T-shirt, nobody beat him. No one beat him. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, Joe Cabral uh, for the, the audience. The clam man. The clam man. But it, he the used to do. Clam yeah. man. He used to do this uh, and probably still he's, does. He does the uh, the national anthem where he makes it sound like, you know, he's oh, doing the say, echo. Say, say. Yo, yo, yo. Say, say, say. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. and it's perfect. It is. Yeah. He it's does a really good perfect. job at it. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and then new owners took over the place. A guy Noah's named Arcade. Mike Kent yep. bought. He's the <laughs> he's a nightclub can, mogul. Can so you put yes. a little <laughs> reverb on that for him? <laughs> Ken, 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 Ken. And, <clears throat> and uh, he decides to buy the place, and he wants to legitimize it up a little bit. He wants to call it Periwinkles and serve yeah, good food. Where did that come from? Where did the, the name Periwinkles come from? Was it just because it was he a probably funny had word? Some or? Sort of, no, I think he probably had some sort of marketing people sat down and Let's come up with something with that's name. nautical mm. and, you know, right. it's Rhode Island, Ocean State. Ah, right. Either that okay. or yeah. he just um, opened up a dictionary. <laughs> Pointed at periwinkles. <laughs> but I like the first story better. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. But I guess he, I guess he came to one or two of the shows and yeah. wasn't quite crazy about it. About and the talent let us night. know that right. that's it. Yeah. No I'm more talent the place, night. No more talent night on a Thursday mm. night, right? Thursday night. Yeah. Um, and uh, did... Did we say to him, oh, please don't do this? We oh. we kind of convinced him that there were enough comedians around where we might want to try a comedy, comedy night. night. And he let us do that, and then we did it on the weekend. And remember that first weekend show that we did? We had to blow the walls out. We had mm. like 250 people show up. Yeah. Really? I mean, it, it was nuts. It was absolutely nuts. Now, I forget, this is in the, the arcade, show? Right? This is in the arcade. Okay, so we had to yeah, open up small. all those doors. Yeah. We had to grab chairs from Everywhere, yeah. Yep. Remember, I mean, Karen came to see the show. She ended up waiting tables. Really? I mean, that, seriously? <laughs> oh I mean, that's how. Busy what year? It got. W- what year was that? It? Was eighty three probably? I guess okay. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was yep. shortly after we started. I mean, I we had, had no business running a comedy night. <laughs> I, had some, I had some sort of a rapport with Mike. I sat yeah. down with him and I made an ad of what mm. an ad would look like in mm. the new paper, in the whatever the paper was that day, that year, and. uh all right, I'll give these guys a chance. I'll mm. g- tell you what, I'll give you guys 10% of whatever we make at, at, at the, the bar. bar. Oh, at the bar. Right. Mm. That was the very first Thursday. And then Frank brought all of his friends, and I 
brought my one. And, <laughs> and, and then that Thursday led to a few more Thursdays, mm-hmm. which led to weekends yep. that, that Frank just talked mm-hmm. about. And uh, like you said, we, the, you, I'm not sure if I could explain what the uh, footprint of <clears throat> Periwinkles are looks like, but it goes out into the middle into of the, the arcade, middle of the arcade. Right. And I had to come up with some method to how do you block it off? It. And I made these giant foam walls that had to be tied I remember those called up every yeah. single show. But it got in um, a good amount of people, and there was no other game in town. Right. Right. There That's was. why it was that packed. was it. Right. There was no other game in town. There, there was really <clears throat> nothing like it at the time. Right. Um, and so, had you guys heard? Were there other like when you guys started, there were no there were no comics, right? There weren't other comics. In Rhode like, Island, there were a few that kind of can't. Like Brian Deary was already out okay, there. Okay, he working. was already doing stuff. Um, he was. Yeah, right. well, he was doing you know his his stuff yeah. in the little places he did, like, really booking um, little bars and restaurants and yeah, stuff like that. But other than that, I think everybody else kind of came out once Perry Winkles was there. Some of them right. came. At Noah's Arcade, started coming up for the um, for the talent night. I think when they found out that there was comedy being done there too, yep. um, you know, so people came and went. Uh, but by the time that we started doing comedy there, there yeah. were probably six or seven local guys, and then some. How do we get Jay Charbonneau involved? Uh, I, well, before that, there was uh, <coughs> people like David DiLorenzo, Greg yep. Johnson used All to right. show up. Uh, yep. There was that. Uh, there were a bunch of people who didn't know what they were doing, and a few who did. Eddie Del Grande, Eddie Del I guess, Grande. right, came right, out. yeah. He was actually one of the best ones, right yeah. away. Mm-hmm. He was. Oh, did he have an act? Uh, well, he reason? juggled. He had. Uh, he had some material that yeah. he did. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, the weekend shows, uh, and then some guy from. Boston comes down named James Charbonneau. I don't know if you guys know who Jay Charbonneau is. No. no. I never even hear his name anymore, but he was one of the Boston headliners. And uh, like any of us have done, he'd yeah. walk into a venue and, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah, what's uh, going on here? Yeah. <laughs> and so I don't know what he went in with. Why don't you book us? We've got a great product in Boston. Mm. And I'm sure Mike Ken said, well, you know, can we mix it together? I'm not going to lose Charlie and Frank. Right. And so he was booking the headliners. So he comes down and books the headliners. Yep. And we were doing the uh, opening and the and middle the acts. Mm-hmm. Um, many times was Frank and I hosting the shows, um, and then and then we started to see all these these big acts come down. Yep. Now we're talking like acts like um, David Chappelle came down. Wow. John Stewart, mm-hmm. Holy great shit. guy, used to work with us. Uh, um, Jeff Garland, who is yep. the guy on he opened Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Jeff Garland. Yeah. Uh, what, what other wow. big names? Stephen Wright showed up. Stephen oh, Wright. Stephen Wright came Later in on, for yep. uh, that was after Barry had taken over. But, um, you know, we had all of the regulars from Boston, right. Don Gavin, Steve Sweeney. Lenny. Uh, I don't think Lenny no. ever... Lenny, I don't think ever did Perry Winkle. No, no he, he didn't. He came later on. He that. came later he on. The third. When, yeah, the third iteration. Because yeah. I opened for him right. uh, yeah. there. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, but we had... Yeah, you booked um, me. We had a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> we, had, we had a lot of, uh, you know, big names uh, that came down. Um, and, um, you know, that, that, went, that went well. It was kind of cool to hang with those guys. Because yeah. we were also traveling up. You know, to, to do open mic time in Boston. Right. That's because um, of Chance Langton. Chance Langton had come down right. and it says to me and Frank, yep. you guys are pretty good. Why don't you work in a Boston? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. so I Typical start, Rhode Islanders, right? All the way to Boston? Start, well, I mean, that was part us. of why we started our own club, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, because right. we were, you know, tired of the commute. The commute. Mm-hmm. Up, I mean, yeah. And, and plus, you know, when you go in oh. you're from out of town, they don't necessarily... Right. Um, it put you up early. Yeah, right. You know, and some of us had day jobs. Yeah. Like both of us. Yeah, right. But, you know, so it was difficult uh, to do that. But it was fun to be hanging with these guys. And most of them pretty cool and, yeah. you know, very helpful. Um, and, and and it just grew. Yeah. It just, it just grew and it just kept growing. It was great until, uh, well, then we found a couple of new places. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we bounced a bit. So, that's, but, so yeah, I started in 89. Yeah. So if this started in 83, so it was six years later, and that was the first that was in the arcade. Right. And it was only there <clears throat> from the time I started doing it, maybe a year. Yeah, then we went two. to Dave All Square. Then Dave All Square for yeah. one year. It was almost yeah. like it was right on the was, anniversary. Was that date. around 1990 that you were at Dave All Square? 
Uh, probably. Because yeah, my, the so. first time I ever went to see live stand up was at Periwinkles, and I don't, I'm not from Rhode Island, so I don't know the locations. Um, but I just remember the stage with the brick in the background, the bar behind us. Um, and I, I believe uh, Nick DiPaolo was like, Either opening or featuring at the time. That oh, might yeah. have been Absolutely. that might have been the original spot because okay. okay. in Dayball Square it was out in the middle. In the of middle, okay. of the no, wall yeah, area. In that big. Th- there this was, was like eighty nine, ninety. I don't know what it right was. It looked like a big. Let me tell uh, you who used to pipe. open up yeah. and host uh, for. Uh, well, for me anyway, uh, was uh, Louis C K. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Didn't Joe Rogan? Joe work Rogan. Dan Gross, Rogan. Yeah. Joe Rogan. Rogan used to be around a yeah. lot. My favorite um, <clears throat> gal. Um, Janine. From PC, uh, Janine. Janine, Janine Garofalo. Garofalo. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. story with that. Well, well let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this let's is about. This story. <laughs> let's get. It. Yeah, um, I worked with her once. But but a lot that of was interesting. Guys, a lot of these guys were kind of they were the middle act because they didn't always get big laughs, but they were kind of original. And, right. And there's right. a reason Quirky. why they they uh, elevated themselves. To where they could now come down with the Me Too movement. Uh, <laughs> lo- love you, Louis. <laughs> it's kind of funny because when Louis used to open up for me, Louis C.K., I used to invite him to my room to to masturbate in front of me. He never did. And there it. was no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed. Yeah. The, the good old days. The good old days, right? <laughs> okay, so I've got to tell this one story. Well, All right, let's this hear is it. my story. And by the way, you have to tell the story about uh, us opening up for Steve Landis. Oh, yeah. That was a big deal for <laughs> that us. That was fun, yeah. Um, but um, we're hosting the funniest person in. Am, am I, by the way, am I too far away? Am I right? Um, every once in a while you go a little okay. bit. Okay. Uh, we are hosting the funniest person in Rhode Island contest held by Showtime Cable TV. Yeah. It's in every state. You've and, talked about that before, Ace. Yeah. yeah. I could, well, I don't want to ruin the story. But too yeah. late. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. No, go ahead. Uh, <coughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what year it was, but. I don't know, the second or third year in it. Anyway, so where uh, somebody is ho- it turns out Dave Kane was hosting it or okay. hosting part of it. Because so, I have a tape. I found the tape. Yep. Uh, and, but I'm kind of running periwinkles at this time. Uh, kind of... Um, uh, kind, like, I'm kind of... Ru- like a talent coordinator. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing a lot of that now. Um, and so... We have a bunch of people coming in. The regulars coming in, and there's Al Ducharme, and there's Tom Carter. These guys are going off in New York, and we could talk about. Mm. And and uh, at the very end of the night, in co- and we're all doing okay. We're not sure who's going to win this thing, but at the very end of the night, in comes this this woman. She's drunk. I, I go up. What do you mean you want to go up? I want to go up. I heard there's a contest tonight. She's, you know, she's drunk. She has this. Cigarette in her, in her hand, and uh, I'm sorry, we're already, you know, we're already, yeah, right. we're already full. We already have about 12 people, whatever. Um, she goes, I have eight of my friends with me. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> and that, and that oh, was yeah. the beginning of a bringer yeah, show. Oh, yeah. Getting piece of the coverage. <laughs> That's right. That's where the bringer show <laughs> yes. came from. No, the genesis of the bringer show. No, no, we never did them. So, no, no, I know. <laughs> so anyway, the night is full of the regular comics doing the regular routines. Everybody doing okay. Nobody really killing, as I remember. Mm-hmm. And Dave King says, well, she just came from a Providence mm-hmm. College. Please welcome. Janine Garofalo and she gets up on the stage and she's drunk and she's not sure what to she not has, even making sense she has the cigarette and the ashes I'm gonna forget the ashes were this long and hadn't dropped and, and I was everybody was fascinated <laughs> just waiting for when they were gonna fall <laughs> no one heard one joke they were just looking for the ash to fall but it was hysterical yeah and then it turns out she had her act written on, on her, her arm. arm and her fingers and yep. her fingers yeah. And she starts doing it, and just a f- uh, some of the jokes were okay. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 they were all a little bit cerebral, uh, as which is yeah which her, is her style. style. But everybody's laughing at her doing this, looking at her arms, and that's it. They're, all right, there, there she goes. And so now, months later, we're waiting to see who's the winner. Yeah, and nobody. Did you win? No. Did you win? Who who won? Now all of a sudden we see it announced Are winner of the funniest me? person in Rhode Island, Janine Garofalo. Are Holy you shit. Are you kidding me? And, yeah. and I remember I saw a picture of the tape. In the tape, 
she is uh, doing one of her jokes, and she's and and, and Eddie Regine, one of our yeah. buddies, always mm-hmm. said to me, "It's your fault because you can hear, <laughs> you you let can her hear in. in the back that you can hear me in the back going, ah, she's hysterical." Oh, uh, you're kidding! There, there was some line where she said, "Oh, she's hysterical." Oh my god! But uh, and you were probably being facetious. No, I wasn't. No, she, I yeah, wasn't. she actually she yeah. had a couple of good ones. Yeah, she. Did. I worked with her once. <clears throat> I I think I don't know if it was Brian Deary or someone booked me with her, and it was at like the Holiday Inn in Worcester at the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Did they book that? I don't was that know. a gig sometime? Probably. I walked in and she was middling, or or, yeah, she no, she was opening, and I was I don't know. I went up after her, mm-hmm. and it was, I, she sucked the air out of the room. Mm-hmm. It was it was there was no one laughing <laughs> at all. <laughs> And then when I saw her doing movies, I was like, all right, good choice. <laughs> and she always had the notebook with her. She, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'll just add just a little addendum before you get to that uh, Latesburg thing. The, um, I ended up working with, I ended up booking. I guess I ended up booking a lot of the shows. Mm-hmm. Even, even though you were still around, mm-hmm. I, was, I was working for Kent somehow. Mm-hmm. And at, the, uh, at, at, at that gig, our second um, mm-hmm. Periwinkles, she is... At Dave Hall Square, she, she's booked as the middle act mm-hmm. and then there's some opening act. And I'm there, and I'm watching over things. I'm just, and she died so much, and I, I said, look, I feel horrible. And I have to, you have to open up. You cannot middle. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I just, that's how bad she was. Yeah. And then she was okay with it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But I think she, she knew some. She knew uh, Barry Katz and Nina. Oh, yeah. She, she knew people in the office who used to get her booked all the time. Right. But that's how bad she was. Yeah. I never and, saw her do good. And all to no, this day, ever. all my friends always bust my cubes about, about every your, time she's in a new movie. Reason. Isn't that great, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> look what you did. Look what you did. Look for what her you career. created. <laughs> Okay. Meanwhile, Stan, uh, Steve Landisberg is dead, so we can talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is out of the wrong order, but no. it's yeah. very early. Yeah, we uh, we got hired to open up for him. And uh, Steve Landisberg was from, from Barney, Barney Miller. Miller. Right. Yeah. Okay. A very yeah. dry from guy. Miller. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and a funny guy, too. Mm. Except not that night. Um, you so they got you got the call. What was it? A, a PC? Yeah, they asked us to. He was at PC for alumni weekend or something, yep. and they asked uh, the two of us to open up for him. Yep. Uh, and they did it at the old alumni hall, right mm-hmm. on the campus, and it was like one of those picture perfect moments. You know, they had the stage set up at center court. Yep. Um, only one side. Of the, uh, of the of the hall was open. It had people <clears throat> yep. in it, and they had two spotlights coming from the corner, just dead on the right stage, on the center. And that's it. So it's like you're going. Oh, this looks really cool. Weeks. Oh my god, we were petrified. Oh yeah, we were petrified because he was he was pretty big right. then, and um, we took a picture with him beforehand. Did we get to talk to him at all? I don't remember much. Um, maybe we talked to him a little bit, and I, I guess he was a nice guy. I don't, yeah. I don't really yeah, have a, a nice guy. big yeah, memory of that. It but is. the best part is, <laughs> we both killed. I mean, we yeah. both had great, sets. phenomenal nights. And then he goes out, and he's trying to get his tape recorder to work. And for five minutes, he's legitimately oh, yeah. trying Couldn't to get, get his door. tape recorder to work. And he's talking about this piece of crap tape recorder that he's got. Now, you're like, you know. I don't know. Looking at hindsight, I would have said, the hell with the tape recorder. Right. I don't care. Yeah. Right. Put it down. But he took right. five minutes doing it. You just killed it. the momentum that you he guys pulled, had built, he right? He the air right out of that yeah. place. And the headline, <laughs> headline was local comedians outshine national act oh, or something man. like that. And we're sitting there going, of course, it was the PC cowl you right. know, yeah. <laughs> that I used to write for. So yeah. clearly I... <laughs> <laughs> Frank wrote the I, article. <laughs> not that, but, <laughs> but it was it, that was that was a phenomenal night. That was the first wow. time we'd ever you know uh, been with any national talent, right? Right. Um, and it was it was really really cool. I remember we had the party at my house afterwards because mm. first time my parents had ever seen me perform. perform. Oh wow! That's so that awesome. was really interesting. So we had yeah. a little party on Flora Street up on the third floor, and yeah. you came right. Yeah. And so I, I said to Dad, "What do you think?" Now keep in mind that I have an accounting degree right. from Providence College. I'm doing stand-up. Yeah. <laughs> My father has an accounting degree from Providence College. <laughs> so he's, so he's not really yeah. thrilled yeah. Yeah. About at his kids standing up and telling jokes. And uh, I said, so, Dad, what did you think? He goes, mm, I didn't think you had to swear so much. 
I said fuck once. Once. Oh, in and like you're coming a off twenty this minute high act, feeling right, amazing, and it's right? like I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> just, you've made there up goes for, the balloon. There you you've go. made up for it since, oh, right? No, I know. Back I, to I, earth. I get it in as much as I can. Yeah. But I mean, that, I thought that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty funny. He's mm. now okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. You he, know, with, he likes with your what ass. I did. <laughs> well, no, he still hasn't seen it again. But <laughs> he hasn't seen it since then. <laughs> but now he, now he can't he's hear. Banned, he's banned yeah. from all the shows. <laughs> That's but funny. the interesting thing that maybe you guys want to uh, uh, talk about is yeah. is is the uh, the the comedy factory that. Periwinkles became oh, every Thursday, then every Wednesday and Thursday, and yep. we would have an open mic night. Yep. People would come in. Sometimes I would. I remember telling Joe Rogan, "He's way too dirty. He's going to amount to nothing. He's going nowhere." <laughs> you showed him. You showed I showed him. him. You showed him. <laughs> and he's, it, it was embarrassing with these oral, this huge oral oh, yeah. sex joke that I wasn't even involved in. And uh, <laughs> that's uh, why. See, there's the real that's reason. Why. That's yeah. what it is. Uh, yeah. But it was it was kind of fun. Push. I remember pushing up uh, Rick Beretta. Yep. I remember kind of pushing up uh, Tom Cotter. Yep. And. One of the best things that's happened in my career was uh, some years ago, the phone rings. I, I'm watching TV at 1030 at night, and it's Tom Cotter. Yeah. Charlie. Tom, what's up? Char Charlie, uh, I want you to watch a Jay Leno show tonight. I'm going to be on my first uh, time on Jay Leno, and a lot of this uh, is because of you. Oh, and I want you to. that's awesome. And uh, it was one of those moments, moments. That I get so choked up. <laughs> I, 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 mention my name. <laughs> no, but it, I did get choked up. But it was yeah. it was nice knowing that right uh, that, that this guy was on Leno. Him. Yeah. Now what, Frank. Now yes. Tom called me five minutes before he called him <laughs> you with him. the same thing. The same thing yeah. <laughs> no, actually, he said, "Do you have Charlie's number?" <laughs> It's um, nice when guys like that yeah. don't forget where they came from. Like right. when, when Bill Burr <clears throat> hooked up with John Parada and had him open up for him recently. Right. And mentioned him in his podcast and stuff yep. like that. It's like nice when these guys it is do nice. remember. Well, and it that's the nice. thing. It's it, So we were talking on past podcasts, too, about how cool it is. Like those guys were like our upperclassmen. When we came <laughs> in, like you guys were the deans and then they were like the seniors and we were like the freshmen, you know, and, right. and you know, like Tom Cotter and Al Ducharme and, you know, Mike McCarthy and, right. and it, you know, it's so it's great when you see some of these guys moving up, Joe Rogan, you see these guys moving up and, mm. and doing so, you know, so well. Um, and to know that you were a part of that, like you, pl you played at the same places as them. It's, it's just cool when that when that happens. Yeah, so. and, it's, and it's nice when you can kind of help somebody, although I don't know how many times I've given somebody a line that I've never, ever used yeah. it. <laughs> um, um, and, and, then, and then Frank started to teach, I don't know if we're getting ahead of this, but mm. Frank starts to teach comedy. Yep. And uh, how many of your students, uh, were you one of the students? None no. that I like to no. talk about. Oh, right. <laughs> now, you were teaching back then in the Periwinkle days? That's when you first started? Um, was after I, that? I was still in stuff at the, um, it was the, the learning, the learning connection. Oh, the learning, the learning connection. connection. That's what okay. it was. They, um, I don't know how that happened. Some, somehow they reached out to me and said, you know, we would love to have a, a stand-up class. Yep. And I said, well, let me think about it. Because really, honestly, it's not something you can teach right it's difficult it's only right. something you can coach right so you really Good can't point. say that i can't teach you to be funny but if you're funny i might be able to help you put that in the right direction right um so to say that it's a a teaching thing not yeah, so much but i mean coaching. i mean parada came came through it he was right. ready to quit comedy i know and he he took my class so and sorry came. world my <laughs> fault my bad well <laughs> And your second mistake, Mike Murray. Mike Murray. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, <laughs> there's been no, a there's few a, mistakes. I mean, right? there's been a bunch of people that yeah. have come. I mean, the Mulhern brothers took my class, uh, Brian and and, uh, and Kevin. Kevin, and uh, you know they've done okay for themselves. Uh, yeah. So Mike Sheridan did he? Uh, Sheridan did actually. Did he take the class? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, he wow. did. Wow. Um, I mean, who else? I mean, there's been a lot of people. I mean, you know, uh, new guy John Morris uh, yep. took it. I mean, he's my good buddy. Yeah, um, he's been on the podcast. He's been a on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he uh, he and I become friends, you know, for other reasons. But uh, one of the ways that he handled his grief and the loss of his daughter was to start doing stand up. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. His uh, his sister in law bought the uh, bought the class for, for him, him and and for uh, her husband, and he did it once, and, and he's done. And he's yeah. actually he's, he's pretty funny. He's not as funny as John, but uh, yeah. 
he's kind of doing some acting stuff. But yeah, there's been a lot of people that have come through, and then there's been some people that really shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Um, well, that's why you called it a boot camp. <laughs> yeah. Well, some yeah. People and get then, out. And, but you, it's kind of funny. You weed out the people that shouldn't well, be there. Yeah, but see, that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they just uh, they keep going. Yeah. You know, and it's yeah, you yeah. know, and. and I mean, you guys have seen it. You know, yeah. one thing I tell you is, you know, you get up on stage, you got to keep working. You mm-hmm. got to be constantly working. You got to come up with new right. stuff. You got to learn something from every show. Right. And just because somebody comes along and pays you 25 bucks or 50 bucks to open up a show does not mean you're a comedian. Right. It means you're a comedian, but you're not done. Yeah. It yeah, doesn't mean going. you've made it. And it's like you don't jump from, you know, hey, I just uh, got 50 bucks to open a show. When can I headline? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's, you have to pay it, your dues it, like it, anything else. Unfortunately, I think that's a little lost right now. Yeah. I don't think people quite understand that the, this is kind of a, this is a trade. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're a plumber. You're yeah. going to be an apprentice for a while right. before right. you can become a master plumber. Right. And it's kind of the same thing here. And there's a lot of people that are, you know that have come along and mm-hmm. that are coming along who think that, boom, I'm in. But part of it is social media. I mean, social yeah. media is how many, how many Instagram comics have you guys oh, yeah. heard about? It's like they got Instagram followings and then they all of a sudden they're on a stage. Yeah. And what do they do? Or they're a YouTube channel. Or, or something you know, like yeah, that. Yeah, one of those. Well, yeah. and, and unfortunately, it's you know, I know comedians that work on the road, um, as we all do, and they'll tell you that, you know, they'll try to get into a club somewhere and the club will say, well, how many followers do you have on Facebook? Exactly. How many Twitter followers do you have? Yeah. Because they want to pack the room up. They do. Club That's, cares they, about they, is they, filling the room. Right. They, right. You know, and some of these people, you're right. I they, mean, they made their name online. They have no material, really, yeah, yeah. and no experience, but they can put people in, in the room so they get booked at these places. Yeah. And it, you know? it, it, but that that kind of diminishes well, us we do. as yes. performers. Yeah. Yes, you know, absolutely. One of, the, one of the pitches I make, like if somebody calls me and wants me to do a bachelor party, mm-hmm. Uh, I'll tell them what I can do for them, and I'll tell them what my price is. And some people go, well, that's kind of expensive. I said, you feel free you to get shop what you around. Pay for. You can get somebody to do yeah. what you want me to do yep. for 25 bucks, but I guarantee you, once you do that, you will never book another comedian for a, ba- a bachelor yep. party ever again. And I've had people call me back and say, you know what? You were right. Yep. I should not have done it's, that. It's just like the bar owner that says, hey, I want to run comedy and here's my budget. You know, they give you right. a $100 budget right. and that, or, you know, $200 budget. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I'm going to book you an open mic or a <clears throat> showcase because right. that's what you're paying me to well, provide, mm-hmm. you know. And that and that's the problem, too. I had a guy reach out for me in Connecticut not too long ago. I, I, I don't know him, but he's running an open mic on a Saturday night. And right. I'm like, yeah. you shouldn't you be doing that on a Saturday night because right. someone's going to go and think that's what comedy is. <clears throat> exactly. And then they don't go to other comedy shows, to real right. comedy shows. Right. And, 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 and that was my advice to him was like, listen, if you want to get some legitimate people to show up, do it on a weeknight. Yeah. Guys will come out on a weeknight and do a spot for you. Right. But I'm not going to give up a Saturday night to do your open mic for one. And two, it's kind of bad for comedy that you're yeah. doing that. And, and mm-hmm. to Frank's point, when you start seeing people who they've been doing it two or three years or even five years and and they're you know they're opening or feature they move up to feature at a club Mm -hmm. and they're like well i i I got enough material to headline and then all of a sudden they're headlining their own show that they put together Mm -hmm. right the problem is what you're seeing is that crowd is now going and seeing yep good comics but not a real not a real headliner not someone who's put eight, 10, 15, 30, mm-hmm. 40 years into it. And that's what they're judging. Like, oh, wow, that's what a comedy show is all about. Exactly. If that's their first time, mm-hmm. they're never going to go back just, to a comedy Just because you can do 45 minutes doesn't mean you're a headliner. No. Right. That right. doesn't make you a headliner. Right. No. And I think if we've learned anything tonight is that to be a solid <laughs> Evidently comic. Evidently, Charlie's uh, wrapping it up. To be a solid comic, <laughs> well, uh, you have to be a Plumbing apprentice first. Yes. Is that what you said? <clears throat> yes. An apprentice to yes. a journeyman. Apprentice, then a journeyman, yeah. and then a licensed plumber. No, but, uh, yeah. but let me tell the you. Plumbing th- is really important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to be a plumber before you can be a comic, evidently. Uh, <laughs> you can mine a lot of material. Yeah. As a in all, oh, hey. Hey, yeah, I'll tell you. In, in all due respect Ooh. to those young kids, they didn't have the opportunities that we had. No. There were open right. mic nights everywhere. Right. Oh, yeah. When I was working. Uh, in New England, you know, kind of being booked by everybody. I was working six, seven nights of the week. Yeah. I get yeah. my car. I drive to Maine. I get my car next yep. night to Connecticut. Oh, yeah. You didn't have to go to Yuck Yucks or whatever in Toronto. No. You could you could make a solid living right there in Boston. Then it kind of 
dip down a little bit. Now all of a sudden there aren't that many open mics, very few. Yeah. There was yeah. Frank I want to catch a rising star, there's one right. here, there's one there. It seems like it's gotten a little bit better. It's well, and a like you need better. open mics to test material right. or else you'll never but get to But you know the difference go. though, Charlie, what we see, what we see now, you see open mics. But you don't see people going out to go to an open mic. The only right. people at open mics are, are the up, comics. Yeah. Well, and yeah. it wasn't mm-hmm. like that. When we were doing you know, we were no, periwinkles, you had actual well, audiences. Well, plus, you couldn't, when we started, there wasn't a lot of comedy elsewhere. Right. True. So one yeah. of the things that killed periwinkles was um, a cable TV. Cable TV, yeah. Um, yeah. And the Gulf War. Which didn't help. <laughs> yeah. Because you get, I mean, seriously, yeah. that did. The comedy connection coming in later on. Right. Um, yeah. So it it was, it was a big culture shift. And I don't yeah. know whether we were ahead of it. I think we kind of got caught in the wave. Not thinking of, about it. And when that happened, so yeah. when the wave, you know, when we went into the trough, I mean, Charlie had already started the folly. So he had a little niche thing going that right. worked out well. Right. I was doing a lot of private stuff. So I had a niche thing going. So. Right. Yeah, we lost the club. There wasn't a place to go to regularly, work. but we were still working. Right. But for the younger guys, really, you're right. I mean, yeah. there wasn't a whole lot for you guys to be doing. Um, until and, until guys like John Parada came well, back right. and started doing the, right. the restaurant shows and right. Brian Deary right. was still around. And, right. and we had but, Kirsten Logan, a new Comic-Con uh, here about three, season. four months ago. Yeah. And uh, she started her own open mic on a Wednesday night because mm-hmm. there really wasn't any in the area right. um, just mm-hmm. to have one for other comics to go to and where she could work on material and right. everything, which uh, bravo to her to work a full-time day job and then do that so she yeah. could work on her material because she knew she needed stage mm-hmm. time to, to get better. Absolutely. Which, I mean, if you, don't, if you don't have it, there's no yeah. way you can work. I mean, I thank God that, you know, that we had Periwinkles and we right. had Santos. Oh, I yeah. mean, one of the one of the best Santos. things for me working with Frank Santos, opening up for that crowd. You couldn't do material for no. that. You're right. You had to do crowd you had work. Had to do crowd and work, and that's yeah. where I got not good to pat myself it. on no, the no. back, but really good at crowd work yeah. because See, you got to be on your toes. And that's <laughs> where I learned a very hard lesson one night when we did the early show at the <clears throat> Connection, and he was the late show yeah. on Friday night, yeah. and he was stuck in traffic. Yeah. So uh, they asked me to stay late yeah. to open up and stall for time. Yeah. Well, I'm new yeah. at that time. I have 20 minutes max yep. so she's like i'll be in the back of the room and i'll uh I'll, you know i'll, I'll, I'll tell you to stretch yeah. or or when when yeah. he comes in the door yeah. while i'm getting to the 20 minute mark and sweat starting to come yeah. down yeah. and they hate me yeah. they hate because yeah. i'm yeah. trying to do material because yeah. i didn't have the experience to yeah. know that to, no to you gotta you gotta fuck and, with yeah. them in the crowd and, and deal with them want. yeah because exactly yeah. And I, I was sweating that out, and then all of a sudden I see him come in the back door, and her wave to me to wrap it up. Yeah. I never wrapped a Thank show you, up so night. fast <laughs> yeah. in my I had, life. I'll tell you a fun story that was that, brutal that you just that just triggered it. I I opened up for Richard Lewis when he came to Catch a Rising Star. Um, forget when it was, first time he came in, and uh, a very weird setup. So they said, Frank, he doesn't want you to introduce him. He doesn't want any big introduction. He just wants you to say, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Lewis, and then you, that's, that's it. it. But you can't swear, and uh, it's going to be like a tight fifteen minutes. That's fine. Just yep. you know, give me the light. I'll be. I can do that. Right. You right. know, people people go. Well, Frank's going to be on for another hour. <laughs> but you know, you can. I didn't want to say it first. I didn't want to say it first. Self awareness is step one. I know what my reputation <laughs> yeah. is, and damn it, I can do an hour fifteen. <laughs> so. Um, I, I go up on stage, and they said, now, the only thing is, uh, he's not going to be in the building when you start. We're going to go get him at his hotel and bring him in. So I said, fine. Didn't think a thing of it. So I'm up on stage, and they're not loving me, but they're there for him. So, right. they, you know, it was like yeah. a, a major headliner crowd. So they'll put up with me for a little while while they're waiting for him. Right. So my stuff wasn't working so great. So I'm having a little bit of flop sweat. I'm keeping going, and I'm looking up. And I'm, Where's the fucking light? This is, I, and I didn't have a watch on, but I'm looking to Jerry in the in the sound booth. I'm yeah. thinking he's scrolling with me. Right, you know, right. Like, he's it's messing like, with me. Not I'm, turning I'm going. I'm, I'm, what, what the hell's going on? There's no light. There's no light. There's no light. And I'm looking over here. Where the hell is Richard Lewis? So I keep going, and Jim Wright pokes his head out of the uh, the entryway, waves his hand. I take that as my cue that mm-hmm. Richard Lewis is here. I said, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Lewis. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he was telling you to keep I going. Said, no, no. 
<laughs> no, because I know Jim, I knew Jim had got right. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm feeling like Max in the sound of music. The Von Trapp family. Where the fuck are they? That's what I would do if I ever got cat. Right? So I'm, I'm going, what the fuck? He just came out because I knew he went to pick him up. Right? So I'm going, ladies and gentlemen, Richard Lewis. Nothing. So I'm thinking, maybe I'm supposed to be off the stage. Yeah. So I step off the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Lewis, he comes running on stage. And he goes, hey, how the fuck are you? <laughs> I said, I couldn't say fuck because he, <clears throat> he wanted to say open fuck it. hello. And I'm thinking, what the hell's going on? So I go out in the lobby and I say, holy shit, that really felt like longer than 15 minutes. He goes, yeah, you did 35. Wow. What do you mean I did 30? Why? We're, they got I held said, up in traffic? Go, no, he was asleep when they went to the hotel to pick him up. Yep. But they couldn't tell me that because I'm already on the stage. Right, right. Right? So then, holy now, shit. so that's the first show. We got a second show that night. Right, so I said, "All right, uh, you're gonna call me bef- when you go because he went back to the hotel. He, back, he didn't yeah. stay. That you're gonna call me when you got him in the car, yep. and then I'm going on stage. Fine. They called me. I went on stage. I, I did. There's the light. Feels about 15. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Lewis. <laughs> Get off the stage, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Richard Lewis. And he comes up and he gives me a hug and he goes, "Hey, man, that was great stuff." I'm going, who the fuck are you? Yeah, right. Yeah. right? <laughs> and what'd you do with Richard yeah, Lewis? Because right. this isn't the this same isn't guy him. that was there. And I was like, it was He hilarious. had a second nap. Yeah. That's why. Like, yeah, he felt recharged. It was, like, it was so, so weird, right? So then the night's done. And I had told Jim, look, I want to get a picture with him before, you know, just for the hell of it. Right. And uh, like I had to back introduce the show. Thanks for coming. You know, yeah. blah, blah. Here's what's coming up. I go off, where's Richard? He's heading to the car. You're going to go downstairs. So I had to go through the back of the casino to get to the back door. <laughs> oh, and he's getting into the into the limo. Yep. And Jim goes, hey, Richard, Richard. He goes, yeah, yeah, what, 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 what? He goes, Frank wants to take a picture with you. Yeah, fuck, all right, do it quick. I got to go get a hamburger. Oh my God. <laughs> he gets, he just, he still had he one foot in the car. And seriously, he leans in. I, I like have my arm around his shoulder. And, he and goes, he's okay, you're good. Car. And he gets back in the car. And it's like, Bye bye. Wow, <laughs> weirdest thing ever. Yeah, we've told those stories before. Where where that happened to me twice. Same situation. Two different people: Caroline Ray in Boston yeah. Yeah. and Jackie the Joke Man in Worcester. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Both of them did the same exact thing to me. They hired, you know. So I got hired. They said, "Okay, we want you to do twenty minutes to open." Yeah. Okay, great. Ten minutes in on the first show, they're yelling to cut off to the side of the stage. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, well, you know, so, you know, you're in the middle of, you sure. plan 20 minutes, you're yeah. in the middle of it, you know, you're not on your ending joke, you're not hitting mm-hmm. that hot, you know, that hard laugh that you want, so I get off, I'm like, was I bombing, was it, no, no. they were like, they just wanted to get up, yeah. both times, yep. second time, they go back to their hotels, mm-hmm. now they're like, all right, just do 10 minutes up front i'm 10 minutes in i'm ready to i'm looking at the stage and both times they're doing stretch you know off the side of the stage both times it, i probably did a half hour yeah. to open yeah i'm like Ugh. i love that though they go would back never to the hotel in someone. between shows Why yeah stay right in the room. just I mean, stay in the room I mean, that's one of the best things when, when i opened for david brenner at catch uh he stayed yeah and he stayed and in hung the green out. room and he hung out and mm-hmm. it's like I was talking to him like Karen and I are sitting back there and I'm like, I'm, I'm fascinated. You're trying not to, to be a fanboy, right? It. Yeah, but how do you not? Yeah, right. Right. No, I mean, David I grew Brenner. up watching, you know, guys yeah. like him. And then Jim Wright comes in and he goes, oh, Frank, why don't you give David a little break? And, yeah. and Brenner goes, no, I'm having a great time. I'm, That's I'm, awesome. I'm going, yeah, that was I almost cool. got to open for him once. And I, I almost, because he was going to come down to the Providence Comedy Connection. Yeah. I wanted to do it so bad. I called up Paul Barkley. Yeah. I said to Dane, I said, I want to I wanna open up for Brenner. She goes, call Paul. Who? David Brenner. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, hey, uh, Paul, that's not David <laughs> Brenner. Hey, listen, I heard a lot about this Ace Zito kid. I want to uh, open up for me. He started laughing. He obviously knew it was me. He goes, Ace, he goes, that is hilarious. He goes, he's not coming down to Providence this trip, but if he comes down to Providence next time, I definitely will let you do it. I met uh, Robert Klein at Catch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cal Verducci was uh, opening, and, yeah. and Cal called me and told me, and he said, hey, come on out. You can hang out. And he asked if I could go in the green room and meet him, and I did. And yep. he was a nice guy. Yeah, I, I interviewed he was a nice him guy. for uh, – because I also write stuff for the Valley Breeze. So I uh, I got to interview him. Uh, and he, he was fascinating. Yes. Fascinating. Oh, my God. Also, also started in pre-med. <laughs> go figure. Really? Huh? Yeah. 
course, he did a little better than I did. did <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, he you know, he did HBO's very first stand-up special. He did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He's, fascinating he's guy. He's going to go down in history. Back in the when HBO first started, he did their first ever so, stand-up special. <laughs> so how did you? How did like the talking about TV and and you know specials and stuff like that? Because the first time I I never won a contest. I always. You know, placed somewhere. Still but time. Yeah, I know. I'm <laughs> trying someday. Yeah. Catch, you know what I say? Catch is coming back. So, <laughs> yeah, you know. Listen, you know what I say? I, I never won a contest, but three quarters of the people who won above me aren't even doing comedy anymore. Mm-hmm. So I'm, 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 I'm longevity. But <laughs> kind of. He's, he's got to hang on the steady. Yeah, he's got to yeah, hang on the Listen, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in a good place right now. My therapist said. <laughs> 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 That's not rude. No, how See, did, mine didn't say that. How did you later. get hooked in with like? So the first thing I did was the Comedy Channel thing in ninety one or ninety two. Yes, where yes. they picked like so. Uh, who was the Sniglets guy? Rich, Rich Hall. Rich Hall. Yeah. Rich Hall. Rich Hall was going to come and close. Yep. And then you, uh, Frank, Charlie, mm-hmm. and Mary Ellen were hosting the segments of the show because mm-hmm. you guys each had your own shows at Periwinkles. And then it was open for what was it? Nine other comics to to win. Something yeah. Like that, and I, yeah. I I mean, and I was naming some of the people, and some of them aren't even around anymore. But like, remember Leo T. Baldwin? Mm-hmm. Uh, was one of bald? Charlie? Was he bald? Yes. Yeah. yeah. He used to kinda... do a thing about the macrame, like uh, I, I just forgot. remember the name. Yeah. Uh, Karen Ruth White. Uh, we got um, tied up with the Comedy Channel. Whatever. Yeah. How did that happen? Somehow we just. They were doing well. That. They were doing something uh, similar to what Showtime had done. They were going around uh, the country clubs. to different clubs, and they picked us. Um, and they were looking for content for the yeah, short attention for short span attention theater, span right? theater. That's right. that's what right. came in. Right. Yes. It's all coming yeah. back to Charlie. Yes, so the second was, wave of the meds that are when kicking they had in. A lot of different clips <laughs> yeah. of all the comedians. Right, they'd say, "Hey, we have a bunch of comics talking about going to Catholic school, right. and then they or being Catholic, and then right. they'd have a you know two to three minute clips of a bunch of people." So then they had the one that um, the Tonight Show did, right? Was it the Tonight Show with Leno that um, I wasn't in that in Rhode one. Island? In that yeah, one. the one the one where we had to go and perform at places like Apex. <laughs> Apex? Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. that was the one at the oh, store you Parada. did. Yeah, well, because I, I performed in front of uh, the refrigerator, the washers and dryers, <laughs> yeah. and Seth MacFarlane. Did you just post that, or was it Parada that posted it? I don't remember that. Someone posted a picture from the journal, and they had it oh Seth MacFarlane performing, performing yeah. at yeah. Apex. Oh yeah, he did. He yeah, did. yeah, that's yeah. right. The, the Tonight yeah, of course, Show we didn't, one. We didn't know who he was. Yeah, no. Otherwise, it would have been some RISD kid. Did you yeah. pick on him? Had we known? No, I know. Well, clearly, I am Peter Griffin. I mean, let's, <laughs> let's face it. Um, and Charlie is Lois. <laughs> <laughs> A fiery redhead. Um, yeah, we, they, they were... Was that our first TV stuff? Yeah, I, I don't remember. There was something with that, but yeah. Leno was doing... I don't know if that was Leno. I think it was Leno's contest, because yeah. Channel 10 was doing it. That's why we ended up uh, in different venues so they were um advertised i oh, apex right. and pawtucket we definitely were in the uh yep. the appliance yeah. section i think we might have been at warwick mall in center court or something in the middle <laughs> yeah i i don't remember that was like a really bizarre i think i did the apex one. thing and then i i ended up winning that one and but there was controversy over it because somebody that was in the contest might have been eddie galvin <laughs> had a problem that somebody complained about him to Channel 10 oh. and wouldn't let him win. them submit him. But because of all of the trouble, they wouldn't edit my stuff. So they took like a minute and a half of my stuff. It was like, there were no laughs in it. Right. And they, I said, can I, can we edit this? Can <laughs> yeah, I come right. in? I'll, I mean, uh, you know, and then, no, no, we already sent it in. So it's like, okay, oh, I got wow. no shot. So, <laughs> but it was a, uh, I mean, there's been a lot of stuff like that. A lot yeah. of, you know, contest thing. They're all yeah. nonsense. Right. It's still on my resume. But of I'll, course. Uh, you know. <laughs> I, I still have Comedy Central on mine. Yeah. I earned yeah. it. Uh, and then we, uh, uh, one of our dearest friends, um, Eddie Regine. Yep. Ed the was Machine. caught doing something a little bit illegal. And we ended up going to prison to perform. Did you really? Didn't we? <clears throat> Did we go to the ACI we, to perform? We, we did, didn't we? <laughs> oh my God! Yes, Holy we shit. did. 
Oh my God! You prefer we were like to half, block that out. We were, we were wow. at like a halfway house for it. We didn't go actually into the ACI. Yeah, I mean, right. Eddie wasn't. You know, it was. It was a halfway house for yeah. girls who wouldn't go all the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know whose joke that is, but, but uh, <laughs> wasn't it, like for Eddie, it wasn't Freddie Galvin, was it? No, 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 no. It was, no, for, it was Eddie for Eddie Regine. Regine. But something else, had, I don't yeah. remember what it was, but somebody had won and But Eddie Regine wasn't out. exactly at maximum security. I mean, no. his was a, you know. No, but you all. performed a, at the halfway house? Wow. So we did something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did something there, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we performed in strange places. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, from the Bay Queen <clears throat> to, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. on water, on land. Um and speaking of TV, I, I, I had, I had, I was working. Uh, this guy named Barry Katz was a booker in Boston. Not and, familiar. Yeah. Not ringing any bells. <laughs> and he had gotten, uh, he he had taken Creator over the Periwinkles contract, thing, yeah. so to speak. And we actually uh, made some inroads with him. I know that I got on this show. It was a showcase show to get on this new comedy show called MTV Half Hour Comedy Hour. Oh yeah. yeah. And um, I remember I was the fourth person, uh, and I, I went up there and just loosey goosey showed my MTV cards. That was my big clothes. My still is. Yeah, and the, and the exact same one. <laughs> the funny thing is, the funny thing. What's funny about those cards is. It's funny to see when, when Charlie started, it's like, so I wrote these cards to, you know, help people with the new bands, you know, with their names. And now it's Twisted like, sister. I wrote these cards <laughs> to help people understand the classic rock bands. <laughs> <laughs> see, timeless. It still works. It's yeah, a timeless absolutely. thing, you know? Absolutely. Oh it went from MTV to VH1 Classic. <clears throat> the yeah. The funniest is, so a couple of years ago when I did the Royal Flush for LLS for Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, and I had Charlie on the show, and he's like, Ace. I haven't done comedy in a while. I don't know if I could do this. How much time do you want? How much time do I have to do? I'm like, I don't know, Charlie. Do like 10 minutes, 10, whatever you're comfortable with. 25 minutes yes. later, we're giving him a light yeah. in, in the park theater because he, he had that, run so long and we had like a million comics. Yeah, right? and that was a show with uh, <clears throat> Carrie Louise, Tom yeah, Carrie Cotter, and Tom. Jo uh, Rock and Joe. Yep, and... Uh, I only named three of the 72 comics. Yeah, that were I know. On that it was night. a big one. It was, it was, I was busy that night. You actually I were. I asked. I know you did. He, I, uh, I want, I wanted Frank, he booked me to take tickets and <laughs> point people where to go. <laughs> so don't feel a, bad. And you did a damn Listen, good job. Thank you. Know Thank you, buddy. you did a damn you good hey, job. Hey, I, I tried to keep your now ex wife out of the, the party room in the back. And. Well, well, there's a little more information. In the back room. What are you trying to get me in trouble? No, where the food was and everything. Oh, the, food the VIP was. section. Oh, yes. We tried to we tried to keep her out. Yeah. Well, didn't work. That well, did. anyway, that, let's that bring the show to a right speech at home. She got half no, the food I want, too. Speaking of sucking the air out, <laughs> we've, we've talked already on on past podcasts. <laughs> I didn't hear you. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not wearing headphones. I'm um, uh, I'm still married to my wife. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah. No, we've talked about, so, you know, we went through the three iterations of Periwinkles, how yes. it moved and stuff like that. And so was it your decision or Mike Kent's to close Periwinkles? My, uh, the, third, the third version yeah. of, uh, of uh, Periwinkles was upstairs in the Johnson & Wales beer drinking district. Yes. Mm. Every Thursday night, they would come out. Every college kid yeah. comes out, gets the drunk. Keg room. I got I to tell the story how we found that. How did we find that? Oh, yeah. How did you find that? I... Party? Used to shop at Morris's clothes store downstairs. downstairs from there. I went in to get a jacket for the Comedy Central thing. Oh, really? Right. So Steve that Bar was right. We were still a Dave. Yeah. At that so point. Steve Barenbaum is uh, he owns the building. Yep. And he goes, Frank. What am I gonna? Sound just like Barry Kent's. What am I gonna do? Wes has just moved out oh, upstairs. Where what am I gonna was. do yep. with it? I said, Gee, Steve. I don't know. I've never been up there. He goes, Well, come up and take a look. I walked in. Yeah. And I said, holy shit, this is a comedy club. So Absolutely. I called Mike Kent, like, there. Yeah. There were two rooms? Two no, sides. Uh, well, we, they, they built it that way. It was, I don't oh, think the wall was open? there. I think it was wide oh. open, but just the look of it. And there was, yeah. the bar was there. Yep. And you walked up, I, brick wall. Plus, we didn't have yeah. mobile phones back then, so I had to go find a phone. Find a phone, <laughs> which it wasn't in the <laughs> and, greatest neighborhood. Yeah, so, so I had to go downstairs and use Steve's phone, and he charged yeah. me for it. But I, <laughs> but I, uh, I called up Mike. I said, Mike, you got to come over here. You got to talk to Steve. You got to come see this place. He walked in and he loved it. Was and he, he said, already looking for somewhere else? Was yeah, because he kind wasn't of a happy transition? with Dave. Well, Dave, all, again, it was in it, the middle of the mall. It was right? in the middle of the it's mall. Kind of temporary, I thought. All yeah, the time. yeah, it's something. I don't know. I rem remember what happened at the arcade. But yeah, Dave all was, you know, and it was not a perfect setup. Right. This right. was a perfect setup. Yeah. Perfect oh, setup. absolutely. And, um, you know, Mike walked in and, and like, 
almost instantly made a deal with Steve. Yeah. And within, what, a couple of months, we were in there. Right. Yeah, yeah and, it wasn't long. You know, so then uh, two months later, we closed. So it worked <laughs> out. No, well, it wasn't. <laughs> no, it was a little bit We, we had years, uh, right? I, I'd, I'd done some artwork and had a nice backdrop. Yep. Uh, and then the we invited, skyline of the, the property. Yep, skyline. Yeah, with the had, hole in the wall. With the hole. I mean, that was right. great. Fake yeah. hole in the wall. Yeah. Yeah. We had Lenny Clark open it up. Yeah. Yep. Um, we had become, I had become friends. We, we all had become friends with him yep. over the years because we were performing with him. And, uh, it, you know, the place, the first place where I uh, uh, started Ocean's Day Follies. Yep. And I thought business was good, except yeah. that when Mike would talk to me, he said, geez, so we're doing all right here, but we're making a killing. On, on the, the bar next door. It was like low, low-priced beer, right. cheap beer. And the kids were loving it. Yep. And finally, after a few months, I don't think it was two months, but I think after some time. Oh, it was after a couple of years. Yeah, it was a couple said, of years. But he was also doing great at Shaboom. Right. Right. So that oh, yeah. was, I mean, yeah. you know, you compare Periwinkles where you can really only turn the crowd yeah, twice, twice a night, one night on a Friday and a Saturday. You can't do it during the week. Right. At your booms, he's turning the room four or five times. Right, right. In the middle of the week. So he's watching that. And he's saying, and hey, the bar it. thing might be a better idea. Right. So, I mean, but then, you know, we did honestly have the advent of uh, cable comedy. And, right. And the Gulf War honestly yeah, did no, I put remember a that. big, big dent. Yeah. Because it was the first time you could watch a war on TV. Yeah, right. 24 and, hours a day. Yeah. 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 And yep. Even like, though it was a short-lived time, yeah. it was enough to kind of have a month or two worth of bad ticket sales. And, and, and yeah, people and, and just then weren't just, coming out. Yeah, it was yeah. just a different... And, it, and I think that that's what fueled it. I, you know, my, and and my Comedy system. Connection came into town. Well, they came right. in a couple of years before. Well, yeah, but they were kind right? of... Um, yeah, they were... When, but they were yeah. when did they open? What you, ah, mm. so if I saw Late 80s, 80s or early 90s? Early 90s. Yeah. yeah. They had the but, big duck and they had yeah. some big names. And, uh, yeah, they, uh, they were getting a lot of big national headliners. I mean, mm. we had... National headliners at Periwinkles. I remember m working with Mario Joyner once. Mm -hmm. um, Mario Joyner. Mario Joyner. Holy shit. Um, but it was funny because I've said it on some of the past shows that we've done. I have the menu from Periwinkles from mm -hmm. that last night, and everyone that was on the show signed it. Oh, that's cool. And uh, I, I'm a pack rat. I, yeah. I keep Mike, everything. Mike Kent's looking for that, so you might want to give it back oh, to him. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, I digitized it and immediately gave it back. <laughs> right, you digitized yeah, it in, in, in 1990. Yeah. <laughs> Frank's blowing me up all night. You scanned it into your Commodore Vic I 20, did you? I am your fact checker yes. on this. Yeah. But there were some Damn. good things. We had, a, I remember, oh, a, a contest that a, a bunch of us each won, and all of us got to open up for somebody. You had Michael Bolton. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I had uh, Katrina and the Waves. Worst night Walking of on sunshine. <laughs> Worst night of my life. Who else? Uh, we had uh, was... Till Tuesday, MX, and I forget who the other one was. Oh, and where did you where did you guys open for them? At the, the Civic, Civic Center. Center. Oh wow! And it was it, yeah, it was. You, it was uh, the, Michael Bolton was the worst uh, night so, of your life. Yeah. So okay, I, yeah. I'll tell you. So Michael Bolton uh, at the time was not the Michael Bolton you know. He was a heavy metal. Oh, act that's right. He started New as Haven. heavy metal. Really? And. He had not become the balladeer that he is today. Yeah. Um, so there were five of us that got picked. I actually was an alternate because somebody didn't want to do it. So I was number six, but yeah. I became number five. I had last choice. So Charlie's, put, you know, who do you, you did Katrina, right? Okay. Well, yep. I mean, you picked. You yeah. didn't do her. Yeah. Right. But as far as we know. So uh, <laughs> Allegedly. Michael Bolton is number five, and none of us knew who he was. I got him. Yep. He's also nine o'clock at night. The, the whole thing started at noontime. Oh, so, so it was, was one the, of those music festivals. Yeah, this was the things. HJY Rock Fest. Oh, okay. In, uh, was it 85? Whatever year it was. But it was, it, you know, it was cool. It was, it yeah. was fine. Uh, but people were drinking and uh, people oh, yeah. were drinking oh, and people yeah. were doing other things. Yeah. And, and you then know, you're by going 9 o'clock, you know, they're kind of baked and everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, man, I remember this vividly. <laughs> Just Carolyn, for those the, for Carolyn those who are Fox. listening, he's in a in a sweat and he's beat red. Carolyn right now. Fox goes out on stage and goes, "Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Carolyn Fox. Yeah, yeah. are you guys ready to rock and roll? Yeah, are you guys ready for Michael Bolton? Yeah. Well, you know what, Frank O'Donnell won this contest, and he's. <laughs> 
Oh my god, the oh, worst, the worst, I'm going, oh, worst intro, intro ever. ever. I mean, they're booing. I'm not even out there yet, <laughs> right? So I go out there and I have my Jews on KTL album cover <laughs> with me. Was, that was like my bit. Yeah, and like they're throwing shit at me. <laughs> Seriously, and they are so Holy drunk shit. they can't hit me, and I make <laughs> a pretty good target. <laughs> So I'm like some of the shit. I'm just batting back the bat, into the, the audience, back. right? So I got nothing. I was up there for only five minutes. I got no laughs at all. <laughs> I'm saying good night. Guy up front goes, "Dude, give me your backstage pass because I had it. <laughs> I had it hanging on my belt. Yeah, right. And I said, "Sir, not if you blew me." <laughs> and they went, "Yeah, he's a genius." <laughs> <laughs> oh, this sucks. And on that <laughs> note, so I walked. Out, yep. I went out the back door of the Civic Center. I crossed the city. I left my car there. Yeah, I walked across the Periwinkles <laughs> in the arcade. Yep. and Charlie looks at me, and goes, "What happened to you?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "I just had the worst show of my life. I need to get. On I stage need to get on stage right and wash this out." Yep. We just right? and he goes, "Okay, there it okay, is. okay, I'll go." Right? <laughs> so I forget who else was on the show. They wrapped up. He goes, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest. Frank O'Donnell just came from the Civic Center. Did a great job with Michael Bolton. Uh, I went up and I did the same five-minute act. It took me 10 minutes to get through it. And crushed. Uh, and it right? was great. Yeah. And it's like I, I walked yeah. out of there and I said, all right, so this is a – it, it's the crowd. It, it, it's, it's the you crowd. You don't want to blame right? the crowd, no, I, but you I, I get won't blame different the crowd crowds. because we shouldn't have been there. Yeah. Or certainly shouldn't have been venue. there at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Ooh. probably the first two comics, the 12 o'clock and the 2 o'clock show, probably fine. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it, but it, it, it yeah. just as bad as you did. To this day, he still has us I put have it the, in his intro. Open up for Michael Bolton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hey, but, a credit's a credit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, but Michael exactly. Bolton has won Grammys. Right. As well, but I, I mean, I honestly, when you think about it. I'm sure Michael Bolton didn't do that great that night if he was still doing uh, no, the he heavy probably metal. probably killed, but I don't know. You know. I was busy walking through You're the running streets of Providence. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry, well, it's funny. Abandoning your car. I've, I've told a story, too, before about uh, Greg Wright and I did a, a bachelor, two bachelor parties. We got hired for, <laughs> you remember Greg Wright? We got hired for two bachelor parties in the same night. Mm. So we go to the first one. We do it. Everything goes great. Guys are like, you guys want to come out with us? Uh, we're like, oh, we got a second show. Maybe we'll meet up later. We go to the next one. We do the same exact material. Mm. And they're screaming out, Fraggle Rock. Remember Fraggle Rock? Yeah. The end of the Where they would hang one of the guys on the fan and he would fly off. The fan would go faster and faster. They, they wanted to hang you Greg. <laughs> No, Greg, because remember, Greg was tiny. They wanted to hang Greg on the fan and, and turn it on. He's like, Ace, we got to get out of here. Holy shit, they want to kill us. I go, no, they want to kill you. Full, full disclosure, you I wanted to do that know. to Greg Wright once yeah. or twice myself. And just, I know. And just, you know, speaking, speaking of bachelor parties, that's where yeah. Eddie Regine got his start. Did he really? At a bachelor party I was doing. Yeah. They set him up to bust my balls. Really? So it's like, you know, I, I'm talking to everybody. It's right. like, hey, what's your name? Oh, my name's Carmine. He starts doing uh, this yeah, Carmine starts, bullshit. Yep. So it's like I went back and forth with him. He was fine. He didn't, yeah. you know, he didn't really bust steal bottom. the yeah. show or anything. But he comes up afterwards and he goes, listen, I'm really sorry. My name is Ed. I, but I really want to do stand-up. I yeah. said, well, you should come to Periwinkle. So right. again, you're welcome. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Who is he? he? Eddie was just in some like video for some rap. Rapper, it's got like forty million. Views, oh yeah, no, right? no, no. He's, he's doing, doing great. He's doing great. amazing. Yeah, no. Eddie, Eddie became a good friend yeah. of ours. Um, yeah. But it was funny. I mean, you know, where some of these guys come from. How you it know, starts. They see you do it's it. Just someone... I mean, how many times do people come up to you guys? Yeah, you know, I'd really love to do what you do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then do it. Yeah. You yeah. know, it. It really. Uh, Charlie tells them not to. Go yeah, away, of course. But, well, that's you know. still Charlie. Well, that's how Charlie has always been. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's I, I not did necessarily it. a bad thing. I did it. Everyone would tell me. I actually had somebody reach out to me on Facebook once a few years ago, and it's like, and and it was something like, you know, you're you're an asshole, you're you you've never progressed, you're still hosting shows, and blah 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 blah, and you told me that I would never succeed in comedy, and you were very mean to me at Periwinkles. I said, you think I'm Charlie Hall? <laughs> <laughs> Because that sounds like Charlie. Yeah. I don't think oh. I ever said that in my life. Oh, yeah. Well, I would remember. So uh, remember, like, open mic night was Wednesday. Then it was like co when I started. Then it was college showcase comedy on Thursdays. And then you, like, you would graduate from Wednesday to Thursday. Then you'd yeah. get to open on a weekend yeah. or do a Santos. But, uh, you know, this is all. So I was at Rick. I had a pager. Yeah. And you'd get your, pa your pager <laughs> would go Loser. off. And I'd see it was Charlie. And I'd. 
Go to the pay phone. Yeah, you know, right. Hey, Charlie, yeah. it's Ace. Oh, Ace, are you available tonight? Yeah, I'm available. Uh, he goes, yeah, all right. We need someone. You know, we need another spot filled on. Uh, it was like Thursday night. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I'd walk in all excited like, yeah, I got called by Charlie. Yeah, this is awesome. And Charlie would just look at you and go, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> we have too many comics here. <laughs> oh, my God. But when you're new, you didn't know that. You're like, this guy's a dick. <laughs> and then after a while, you get to know his sense right. of humor, and I you're like, oh, he's a ball buster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you got to learn not to take Charlie seriously. The, f the first time he did that, you must have been crushed. Oh, though. my God. I was like, the fuck? You just called me today. I was in the middle of like astronomy class, and you said, you needed someone i did you know <laughs> wait a minute you took astronomy uh yeah i did I, thank you for acknowledging that All right, I, my I brain was still processing it as you yeah. said it i took well, astronomy that, as that's a good. general so requirement a star. you don't that's you don't right. need a gps no, that's good that's you give right. you a sextant I, and you can find your way around yeah. okay well all the millennials sextant, are now looking up yeah right sextant. what's a sextant they're going don't you just use Skyview on your on your iphone i use ways i don't use sextant is that an app yeah right that's funny did you download the sextant app yeah don't laugh there's probably one on here by the way we'll after look. all these years that we're yeah. talking about in comedy i happen to go by uh an open mic with john parada at yep. the um park the pub on pub park. park yep uh part of a bowling alley yeah yeah and it was a monday night and i, I had to meet somebody there and so we watched i watched 12 of the most miserable comics <laughs> filthy dirty unfunny <clears throat> people i've ever seen and you, you, would, I, you just and think. you were there. I was. You were there. <laughs> no, that that was a paid show. So yeah. we were all on. <laughs> just horrible and filthy and. But you know what? Horrible. We were. You said it. You said it earlier. When the first time you got up, you were filthy. You were horrible. It seems like that's kind of like Let we me all amend start. That statement. Uh, uh, I don't think it's different. It, you feel it's it, different it now. Is, it is. Yeah. Go ahead. You 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 say. Yeah, and then I went, uh, and then John Parada held his All Star Night on a Saturday, a Spring Saturday contest. Yeah. So let me go down there, and it still was basically horrible. really the crowd. Um, you know, of course, they're all talking in the back. The crowd's laughing at some stupid stuff. Stupid stuff that. Uh, I, 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 Charlie's it, showing it, it his did age. Not, <laughs> it, it did not. I did not get enthused. You to go young comedy. whippersnappers, you don't understand. <laughs> Heck, when <laughs> I did yeah, comedy. Yeah, <laughs> I had to walk to the show. Somebody give me some tennis balls for my walker. It was uphill. It was three feet of snow, and I shoveled my way to it. That's to right. You would just think that after all these years, yeah. people would somehow be better. Yeah. You know, it, but they're still it, new. You know what, what's interesting, though, to, to the point of we all started dirty. Yeah. I think that's kind of the way comedy progresses. It, be, it, right. it progresses it the same way your humor uh, grows as, yeah. you, as you get older. So when you're in grade school, yeah, the first jokes. joke, they're fart jokes, yeah. they're shit jokes. You get a little bit older, they're sex jokes. Right. But you, you got to get past them. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, no, so it's right. like, um, and, and one of the things that we hear so, I mean, one of the things that I, I, I did a catch after going through a Thursday night and listening to six of seven of the acts do jokes that were worse than the last about some sex act. Yeah. Mm. And oh, it seemed yeah. like they were trying to top Outdo each other. Every, and, and they weren't. It's just the way that it worked yeah. out. And, I mean, the last one ended up with somebody kneeling on the stool uh, with his ass to the audience and uh, showing how the microphone might be used for anal sex. Oh, Jesus. And it's like I'm sitting there going, ah. And then yeah. poor Sarah Blodgett was the only girl on the show. She had to follow that. Yep. And I said, gee, Sarah, I'm really sorry. She goes, this is what it's like yeah. all the time. And it's like, I, I finally said, listen, if you're going to be talking about jerking off all over the, uh, the right. room, I, please do it somewhere else. Yeah. Because it, it, but you know, you kind of sound like a prude at that <laughs> right, point. Right. And I get and it, it. I, you know, but right. there's got to be a but way to But there's got to be, be a way to make it funny. And you know, the problem is too, is people, we've all had people come up. Hey, my friends say I'm funny. I want to do comedy. Oh, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. 
But yeah. the reason why your friends think you're funny is because you all have some common theme or right. something right. in common. There's no setup that makes them when, laugh. when you're around your friends. Right. right. You, they, you all have that commonality. Right. What's the challenge is to be a comic or to be professional is to find commonality with strangers. You're going to make a room full of strangers laugh. Right. But what, what happens is, too, when you start, your friends will come out to see you. Yeah. Which I tell people who start all the time. They yeah. will come and support you. Yep. Yeah. Up to a point. Yeah. Yep. After they a while. They get tired of seeing your stuff. Yep. They get older. They get married. Yep. They have kids. I Life mean, the same happens. thing happened when we started uh, our you know weekend shows at Periwinkles. I was working at Ann and Hope, I think, right? Yeah. Probably. And um, probably about 150 people were there for me that first night between right. Ann and Hope and my family and Karen's family and just you know people that I'd grown up with. They stopped coming yeah, <laughs> after, after a while, while you know. Absolutely. Well, and you know, you make new friends, and right. you, you know, by that you time, you them. hope that you can work with a room full of strangers, and that's what you got to work towards. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, you'll say, you know, you'll say something to a group of friends. It's kind of a catchphrase for your friends. And your friends, right. are like, <laughs> that's great. And everybody's laughing in the but when you they're not there and you're doing the catchphrase, what point is it? Right, exactly. And Derek Moore said that mm-hmm. when he started comedy, his first two shows, the room was full of his friends and sure. family, and you he's like, I security. crushed. Yeah, right. He goes, my blanket. third time out, it was an open mic, mm-hmm. and nobody was there to see me, and I died yep. the whole time, and that was such a valuable lesson to to him at that point. Yeah. And Louis C.K. said it, you know, before he went into hiding, that yeah. <laughs> he's you never learn anything when you crush in a room. You learn oh, nothing. No, you, don't. you walk away saying, no. "I did great," and that's yeah. the end of it. Yeah. You only learn by bombing when you're not doing. Yeah, well. you got to figure out how to make that. But work. you know what it is too. I think when you're new too, and you bomb, and you're like, "Oh my god, I bombed!" And but everyone bombs. Sure, Louis C.K. bombs. Mm-hmm. Dave Chappelle bombs. Everyone has bombed at some point. It's just that you think that those guys never have ever bombed. You've, You've not seen bomb. them. Yeah. As you grow, right. You get to where they got to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Every yeah. no nobody walks on stage the first time with a one hour special. It just doesn't happen. Right. Right. You yeah. know, you can see though when you like you talk about a lot of young people when they're dirty. When you see that one guy that has something a little extra, and you're like, okay, he's gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. He's got a unique point of view. He's, right. He, I like the way that he thinks. He stands out a little bit. Drew Dunn was like that. Yeah. Uh, Drew Dunn's only I been think, do comedy five or six years. Yeah. He works basically clean. Mm-hmm. Great point of view, and just the first time you saw him, you were like, this, this kid's gonna do well. I think mm-hmm. Tilson's like that. Do you yes. know Jonathan, Jonathan Tilson? Tilson. No. He's a newer guy. Only been doing it maybe two years, but he's got this off viewpoint that is really really funny mm-hmm. and some people get it some yeah. comics just lie in the way and they watch for years they go to comedy clubs and all of a sudden they get they get on stage and they've learned what they want to do right that, that they was found me. their voice by just yeah. observing yeah. That, mm-hmm. that was me because I didn't try comedy till I was 30 years old I, I I went to clubs, I'd watch it and I'd always have these ideas and I'd write them down right. and stuff like that but I never you know got myself up to do it until Cal Verducci pushed me into doing it one night up in Boston, um, their open mic night on a Monday night, and it started from there, and I haven't stopped yet, you know, ever since. It's kind of funny because, you know, I can't say that I studied comedy with an end towards doing stand-up, right. but, you know, I did grow up watching, you know, the TV specials. Yeah. So, you know, I'd watch, like, Bob Hope. I'll mention him because I got a great story about him. Yeah. but. Um, you know, you'd watch him, you'd watch Jack Benny, you'd watch George Burns. And I, I tell new guys, you got to look at, you got to find these guys on YouTube. They're, yeah. They were masters. And I, oh. I can't, I, I don't, I wish I could remember who the guy was. I said, you got to go and watch Bob Hope. Bob Hope, he's a hack. No, no. he's not. <laughs> he's, he's a, a hack, hack because, because everyone else has copied him. Exactly. Exactly. It's, you know, it's what I, I tell people that to me, if you want to study comedy writing, the best joke ever is Henny Youngman's Take My Wife, Please. Yeah. Oh, it's a classic. Four, four words, right? Classic. So it's like when you say that to somebody, you go, wow, why is that funny? It's like, well, here's why it's funny. Right. But it's, but it's become unfunny because so many people have, have done it, taken it and done it. Right. Exactly. So, 
All right, so, so what's your Bob? Jokes for some of the top guys. Well, that's oh, it. Yeah. Right Be- and Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Thank before you, before you tell you Bob Hope story, you know what I've been watching lately? It's on Hulu. Is the uh, Dean Martin celebrity yeah, we roast? We were talking about that before. Oh, that was were, genius. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Ninety percent of the jokes could yeah. not be told today. Oh, no, no, absolutely. But they, it is so fun. Yeah. I I saw the one yeah. where they roasted Sammy Davis the other day. Yeah. It was hilarious yeah. from beginning I, to I end. I would love well, to you know, see Foster Brooks was. Try to get something like that back, back yeah. as opposed to the roast that they're doing that now. They're right, doing now. right. Yeah. Because the roast they're doing now, they're just trying well, to outdirty each other. Right. And they're going for right. celebrity. They're, they've got, you know, Ann Coulter and like right. people who they don't do comedy. The, but you know, you're these funny. guys on Dean Martin, do, they they weren't swearing. No, it was yeah. all innuendo. It was yeah. very creative and, and stuff. The funny, the right. funniest is you brought it up before, and then I watched the Foster Brooks. Um, was it Rickles? I think it was when they were roasting Rickles. And he had said it before. He said, if you really watch him, he gets up, stands up, walks straight to the mm-hmm. podium. It's not until he gets to the podium that the character mm-hmm. comes out. Yeah. And then when he's done, takes his cards and like... Mm-hmm. Soberly walks yeah. back to his seat. When, when like, they show was, him laughing and stuff to other people's jokes, yeah. he yeah. looks absolutely fine. Right. And then as he steps up to the mic, it the was drunk just, guy his, snaps yeah. into place, yeah. and and it's hilarious yep. to watch. And I heard he never had a drink in his life. Yeah, really. Yeah, well, they said he was sober. I, yeah. I had read that somewhere that he was really sober. That's he, so sad. It was all an act. <laughs> <know>. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> How can you so, go through life like that? So Bob Hope. Bob Hope. Right, let's so hear it. Uh, so I uh, I used to go to comedy writing conventions. I out in uh, California uh, mm-hmm. with a guy named Gene Parrott, who was um, wrote. Uh, he was Hope's head writer. Yeah. Uh, but he also uh, wrote for Carol Burnett. He wrote on Laughing. Carol Burnett show. I love wrote, that show. Yeah. Mm. Oh, absolutely. Uh, he was one of the producers on Three's Company. He wrote uh, a book on shit. comedy writing. He I can't remember the name of it, of it, right? Well, it's Comedy Writing Secrets. But, That's it. You know, yeah. Don't tell anybody. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a he's got a whole series of books. Yeah. Um, I just I know I read that first. It's a great one. workbook that. So anyway, I I would go out to his uh, conventions and we became, you know, pretty good friends. So um and and we remain uh, decent friends. So I, I he he always said, look, Hope is always looking for stuff yeah. when he goes out somewhere. So that's your best bet of breaking in with Bob Hope is if you know he's coming to your town, write some local jokes and send them into him. Yep. So um, he was coming to the Civic Center. He was doing a show for Old Stone Bank or something. Wow. And um, Old Stone, Old Stone Bank. Bank. Yeah, right? So <laughs> we, um, I, I wrote a couple of pages of, of Rhode Island jokes. I mailed them to his office at NBC. Mm-hmm. I mailed them to his uh, agent's office. I mailed them to the Biltmore, and then Charlie and I went down, and they let Charlie do a balloonogram. I was doing balloonograms really? those days, and, wearing a tuxedo and a blue wow. uh, vest and blue sneakers. So and he, he knocks on the door. Yep. And Were you was, right there with me? I was in the back. I was like so scared. I didn't want to go anywhere <laughs> near the door. I don't want to get door. in trouble. So I saw the door open, and I'm going, oh, <clears throat> God, he's looking at Bob Hope right now. So <laughs> you, and you're saying thanks I for said, the memories. He's like, hey, hey, what's that? So, yeah. right, hey, I got to tell you. So I walk in with my balloons, and I'm like, I have a little, song, a little delivery for you, Mr. Hope. And I'm not scared at all. Yeah. Thanks for the memories you've given to us all. God knows we've had a ball. And it's great having a great star like you in a state that is so small. So thank you, Bob Hope. We really mean it. Thank you, Bob Hope. And don't forget it. Meanwhile, I'm lighting him. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Thank you, Bob Hope. Here's Frank O'Donnell. (laughs) Well, no, he handed him the envelope that had the stuff in it, and yep. we left. And I'm going, oh, my God, you know, wonder if he'll use my material. Right. Uh, and he did, so, didn't he? No, not that night. So he, um, I didn't hear anything from him at all. And then when the Wednesday of that week, I'm at work. I'm at Ann and Hope in the offices, and they page me. I said, Frank O'Donnell, you know, pick up line, whatever. So I picked up the phone, and it's Karen. She goes, where are you? I said, I'm at work. Hmm. I said, but where are you? I said, I'm, I'm in the controller's office are you right sitting now. Down? Get back to your desk. I said, why? Bob Hope just called here. He's going to call you. I said, really? 
She goes, she goes, yeah, get back to your desk. Holy right? crap. So my desk, my, my office was down the corridor yep. in the uh, Cumberland complex, you know, which is all warehousey and everything. Yeah. So I'm walking down the corridor, and the guy that I work with pokes his head out of the office, and he goes, my pope's on the phone. <laughs> I said, I know. Tell him to hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Acting all cool. Yeah, right. So, like, I, I pick up the phone, and he goes, hey, how you doing? I said, really good. How yeah, are you? Yeah, you have that guy Charlie Hall's right? phone number? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he's saying. Yeah. Tom Cotter's looking for it. <laughs> I don't know. I so he uh, he said, hey, listen, I got your jokes. I, uh, I really enjoyed reading them. I wasn't able to use any of them because I didn't get them in time. But uh, listen, anytime you want to send me some other stuff, go ahead and send it wow. to me. And then he, he told me, hey, did you hear about, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, they, they asked uh, Jesse Jackson about Beirut. Did you hear what he said? I said, I don't know myself. He goes, yeah, I like him. But I, I thought, uh, oh, God. Beirut, I think that uh, Hank Aaron's a better ball player or something like that. So like I'm going, yeah. <laughs> that's great. And then he hung up. And that's like, I'm going, well, oh hey, God. that's it. I got the up. laugh and he cleared it. But it's yeah, like right. I'm sitting there going, Bob Hope just called, called Annie Hope. Hope. Yeah, right. yeah, so it's like I'm waiting, yeah, right. for, I'm waiting for the Chase yeah. brothers to find out that Bob Hope was on the phone with right, me. Right, right. That took about 10 minutes. Yeah. But um, so he didn't use any of it then. But then he came back to Rhode Island to do the uh, – RI-350 fest. Yeah. So I did the same thing. I wrote a bunch of jokes, sent them in to him, and didn't hear anything. So he was at Quonset Point, big open air thing. So I had the choice. I got a call that day to go work up in Portland for Barry. Yep. And I'm weighing this. Do I go and make my money up in Portland, Maine? Right. Or do I go to see Bob Hope not do my jokes and be disappointed? Right. So I yeah. went to Portland. Went to Portland. Next morning, front page of the journal, a huge picture of Hope. Three of the jokes that they quoted are mine. Are you oh, like, get out. And it's like, I'm sitting, oh, oh my, my God, I can't get out. Oh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was cool. It's a and great when, when did Leno happen? And did he? So Leno was afterwards, but here's a. Uh, did he pay for them? Like, did he? It, Hope didn't. <laughs> no, pay no. For those. He's no, on no, my, no, I'm just. I no, was he's, just on, he's on my he, resume, and that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, here's, here's one of the cool things. My son Patrick was actually born on Hope's 90th birthday. Oh, wow. Um, so, I, I sent a note to Gene, and I said, listen, my son was born on Hope's birthday. You think maybe he'll, you know, send him something? A couple of weeks later in the mail, Patrick gets a note with an autographed picture of Bob Hope. It says, Dear Patrick, so you were born on May 29th. Don't you know that's been done already? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So he's got a great little That's thing. awesome. So Leno happened um, pretty much the same way, uh, hanging out at the uh, conventions. There was a guy that was working regularly for Leno because he was the permanent guest host on The Tonight, on the Show, Tonight at that Show point. Yeah. And he was just working from Philadelphia, sending him material all the time. But he said he always accepts stuff. So if you want to send some stuff, send it. Mm. So I sent a bunch of stuff. Back then, I think we had to fax it and I forget exactly yeah. how, it, how it went. But I sent stuff for about six months. So I was home. This is right after Elise had been born, so our first. Mm -hmm. So it was like in November. It's right after, right around Thanksgiving. Karen was out shopping. I'm watching Elise. Phone rings. Hello. Frank, hi, it's Jay Leno, who wow. right now sounds like Bob Hope. I don't yeah, know right. That happened, <laughs> hey, hey, Frank, how's I, it going? So, like, I'm sitting there going, all right, this is my brother Jimmy busting my balls, <laughs> right? Because I figured, yeah, right. you know, that's something that would happen in my family. <laughs> so, like, I'm going, yeah, hi, Jay, how are you? He goes, hey, great, listen, I'm looking at some of this material you sent in. I'm going to go try it at the uh, uh, Hermosa Beach oh, yeah, Magic, Comedy Club. Magic Club or something. I'm yep. going to try it tonight. And uh, if it works, I think I'm going to use it on Tuesday night. I said, oh, that's great. And then we started talking, you know, hey, what are you doing? I told them that I worked at some of the clubs. Yeah. Hey, have you ever worked at uh, Sam's or Nick's? Or, so we're yeah. talking about that. And we had a nice conversation for about 10 minutes. Yep. So, you know, I'm, I'm hanging up and I'm going, all right, who do I tell? Because, right. I mean, he quoted one of the jokes. So I knew yeah. it wasn't because I didn't share my jokes with my brother. So I always right. have um so i told a few people i didn't go nuts yeah but i told a few people and we had like a little party at my house on that tuesday night and I, yep. he used to do the 15 minute monologues at that point yep. <clears throat> and by the 13th minute he still hadn't done any of my jokes uh, and i'm yeah, sitting there looking crap. around the room going they're all sitting here waiting to hear one of my jokes <laughs> yeah right <laughs> he better use which one, one am i gonna say was mine <laughs> 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 so, but the cool thing is that it was the last joke of the uh, of the oh, night so oh, i only wow. used one of them what was it it was um right around the time uh, mcdonald's had um 
um, oh God, what was the name of the, the sandwich? Oh, the McRib. The, the McRib, McRib sandwich, sandwich. Right? And you go, hey, how about that McDonald's? The, the new McRib sandwich. Boy, they are going to use every part of that cow, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> What's next? McHoof? <laughs> McHead or something like that? And yep. it's like, and, and it was it got a pretty good laugh. And I'm saying, they go, that was that mine. That was mine. And it's like, I don't know if anybody believed me, but yeah. I showed it to him on a piece of paper. So it was cool. Wow. Well, that was neat. That was neat. And then he used, I, he used at least one other of mine. Yep. Uh I don't know what it was. Yeah. Sent me a check. Oh, wow. So he did pay. Yeah. So he well, paid. Brian Mulhern had been yeah. on before and right. said that. He you said, know, And someone had told him, maybe it was you that told him, yeah. you'll write a hundred of them. He might use one out right. of every hundred jokes you And send he them. also makes it, he makes it very clear to you, he did in the phone call, yeah. that I could get that same joke from somebody else. Right. And if you hear me say it and I don't send you a check, it's because, it's because someone it, else wrote did, it. And you got to trust us on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, who am I going to? Call up Leno. Go, hey, excuse yeah. me. You, you stole my joke. Right, right. <laughs> Not wow. a good thing to do. No, yeah. no, that would be career suicide. Although I did that one. Brian so Mulhern you... stole mine. I'm almost. No, no. When, I, 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 I love you, these stories. Yeah. Are we almost done? When did? Oh. When, whenever we want. Almost. <laughs> we're we're. It's we're, a podcast. We get it has a, no. I hit to miss the voice. Is that on? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, when did you start getting hooked in with? Um, the Warwick Musical Theater. Ah, uh, the Warwick Musical Theater. They actually had a contest, I think, again at Paramount. Oh, really? And did I win? Or something? But I, the prize was to open up for open someone. Open up for Cool in the Gang. Oh, all right. I think I won it, or else they, <laughs> or else there were a few winners. I forgot yeah. how it went, but I opened up for Cool in the Gang, and uh, they loved me because I had, I had, I was much more clean than anybody else. Yeah, and. A lot of that was my Jerry Seinfeld influence, yep. who I got a chance to work with, and uh, you know never swears except when he's off the stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. That's word, what I heard. Another word. <laughs> um, That's funny. But he opened up for Cool in the Gang. It's great. You know, the World yeah. Musical Theater. You're you're in the round, and the funny thing is to do my MTV cards. Yeah. You know, you had, a, you had to walk around like a and, and you got to turn yeah. like a ring girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the wave of laughter <laughs> would go all the way across. <laughs> Wow, cool yeah. a ring girl. It's how like many, UFC fighting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how many? How how big was that venue? Because people have asked me before, how and I don't. Venue? Yeah, like how, yeah, many, how many, many did it were in it? Three thousand. Three okay. thousand. Wow. It just looked like that because it's in the round. <laughs> right. And well, plus but, they had the upstairs. Yeah, which the upstairs section. We really section. couldn't see when we were on the stage. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and that was that, that was tough to play to them. Yeah, yeah. I remember I had to look up. Yeah, and and you know, so you're looking all over the place. And that and that led to uh, you know opening up for uh, Reba, opening up for Charlie Daniels, and uh, uh, and so you did you meet? Was it was it Larry that was doing the booking, or was it Al that was doing the booking? No, 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 it was it Buster. Was, it was Larry. Oh, it was Larry's dad, Buster. It was yeah. his son Larry who was doing it. Oh, all right. Okay, his son Larry, and then. Uh, I tried to um, get in uh, Eddie Regine. Yeah. And then Eddie Regine goes. Now, Larry, it was uh, uh, Buster Bonoff, right? Mm. His son, Larry Bonoff, had become a motorcycle y type guy with leather vest, yeah. and hair, and <laughs> mm-hmm. everything. You wouldn't even think he's a, anything to do with showbiz. So uh, he goes, uh, Who else should I book? And I, I suggest Eddie Regine one night. Yeah. So Eddie goes over there. Now, Eddie doesn't know that this is bust, uh, Larry, Larry Bonoff. Yeah. And Eddie Regine is treating this guy. Like a piece of crap. Like a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> the He's saying, hey, on, where's uh, my waters? Yeah, uh, Give me some food yeah, back here. trailer's over there. Yeah, yeah. whatever. I got to Come on. He has like, eight people with yeah, him. He has an he entourage. Has entourage. <laughs> And he's treating this guy like crap. Yeah. And then later on, the guy Eddie goes to me, who is this guy? He's a, a, a pain in the butt. That was Larry Bonoff. <laughs> that was the owner. <laughs> the owner's Larry son. Me, and Larry banned him. Oh, did he of the really? Attitude, this uppity. Really? I'm better oh, wow. than you type performing attitude. But he eventually got back in because he, he that's he was I, opening. I, he started opening for Dice. I put in a good there, word. right? And. Uh, is that where he was opening for Dice? Well, he's, I think that's where he, he got there, and then Dice liked him and started bringing him around. I but I ended up opening up for like 24 different acts. Yeah. There. I think they told me I was uh, I was there more than anybody to yeah. open up. Um, who did you open up for over there? I had Chicago. I had Chicago The Temptations, Temptations. The Judds. The that that wow. was the best one. Was it really? That one I had to be squeaky clean. Yeah. Because uh, it was Naomi's 
farewell tour because she uh, retired. Yep. And um, they said, you, you can't swear. You can't do anything suggestive. And I had to clear one joke with them to make yeah. sure that was okay. And they said, no, don't do it. I, really? I, it, it really wasn't a dirty joke, but I said, listen, better yeah, than right. now. <laughs> had to go meet them on the bus. Really? Got blessed by the, by Naomi. It was kind of, it was interesting. <laughs> wow. But the, the coolest thing is I did my show and it, it went well. I'm coming up the, uh, the, uh, the aisle to leave. Louis Anderson is standing at the top. Oh, get out. Right? And, and he's... He's going, that was pretty good, kid. And I'm going, What's he doing what are you doing here? Mm-hmm. I'm really good friends with Winona. Get out. So he came to see Winona perform. Wow. And it was like, <laughs> it's like, wow, this is really weird. It's like a little bonus thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it was cool. It was a great place. It was to, such an uh, awesome place. I was lucky at. enough, the, the last three years you had gotten me in, and I've said it, um, to talk about clearing jokes. Mm. So I get booked to open for Luther. Yeah, Luther Vandross, and I'm like, this is gonna be great. I'm so excited. The literally, I think it was the day of. I get a call, and they said, "All right, now you can't do any." Luther is a born again Christian, so you can't do any Catholic stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you seen my act? Why the hell did you book me? <laughs> and I was so nervous as I walked. You know, they pulled the ropes, and you'd walk down the aisle. And as I'm walking down the aisle. I literally started feeling like tunnel vision, yeah. like, like I was going to pass out. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that saved me, I got a shot of adrenaline when all I could think of was the Providence Journal the next day. Comic passes out, <laughs> opening for Luther Vandross, <laughs> and it snapped me out. And it was it was surreal, you know. And I wasn't I wasn't comfortable because I had to change so much. Right. And I instead of saying Catholic school, I said I said private school. So it kind of mm-hmm. and I didn't know how it was going to go. Catholic- School stuff was it was clean. Was fine, it was clean. clean, but they didn't want anything about religion, which I'm like, that's three quarters of my act. But so yeah, I got to open for Luther, Engelbert, and um, Huey Lewis, and it was funny because everyone's like, "Did you meet the you know the Huey Lewis in the news?" I'm like, "No." There was Huey yeah. Lewis's trailer. There was the news trailer, and then there was like the horn section backup yeah. band. I was with those guys. Yeah. yeah. You know, with my trumpet. (laughs) You guys want to to play? uh, (laughs) I know, I know one song. (laughs) Yeah, I used to do some. um, (laughs) You guys know Damien Goliath fundraising performances at different like high schools around New England. Yep. And uh, I worked with Herb Reed of the original Platters and his group. That's right, Herb Reed and the Platters. Right. So uh, I did a show with them in uh, Orange, Connecticut. I think it was. And then a month later, I did a show with them outside of Springfield. And uh, I went up to Herb, and I said, hey, Herb, nice to see you. Remember, I worked with you uh, a month ago. He goes, oh, yeah, you were the guitar. <laughs> I said, yeah, no, no, I was, was a comedian. He goes, oh, yeah, you were funny. I said, yeah, let me throw that right in my resume. <laughs> he was, You know what? He was really nice. I, I was opened great. for them at the Rocky Point Palladium right before they closed. You had me open up for them. And it was funny because I'm, I'm all excited. And then mm-hmm. I look at the program, and I'm like, all right, none of these other people were in the platters because they were all oh, yeah. way too young. It was well, Herb, and, and the funniest it was thing his is, iteration you stay, of the platters. Did you say for the show? Yeah. Because the best part is they have his microphone. He only sings the bass part. Yeah, he's the bass. So he's like, he didn't even sing boom, lead on anything. Boom, boom. Yeah. <laughs> they they jacked his microphone up, <laughs> and you can barely hear the other it people like, when <laughs> he's singing. It was so like cranking like, a subwoofer, <laughs> you know? Because he's the one platter. Because he's he the was, one platter. He was it. Yeah. It, so it, his, the name of the group was Herb Reed of the original platters and his group. Yeah. That's how they had yep. to be built. It was hilarious. Yeah. But he he was well, like was funny because he was like this. He was shorter than me. He was probably like oh, what, yeah. four tiny. foot eleven, yeah. and he had like big, huge, yeah. massive gold rings. He yeah. was like a tiny little guy, but yeah. he had these big gold rings. And he he taught, but he he told stories about oh, yeah, you know yeah. the sixties and the fifties. Oh and yeah, he was cool. It's just he was, a, funny as hell. Yeah. One other thing about the tent is the the monoffs were great to yeah. us. I mean, I remember the first show I did there. Buster took me into the uh, the box office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And paid in cash, and they really? paid very well. Yeah. I mean, you know, the money that they paid us then would be good now. Yeah, right, um, right. But he said, he said, listen, I enjoyed your show. I want to let you know you are now part of the family, yeah. which is something that, you know, nobody yeah, does Yeah, no that. one does and, that. And, you know, I, I <laughs> mean, right. I still, you know, I talk to Larry once in a while, his yep. uh, sister Betsy, 
works at PPAC, so I see oh, yep. her down there all the time too. And they still, they still, remember you. I'm friends with Facebook with Larry. So I, I had not seen Larry in a long time. Mm. The first time when I did the Luther Vandross, I came off stage and Larry was like, he's, si- he's literally sitting on the bike. Yeah. You know, yeah. sitting on his on his motorcycle off stage. And he's like, you're a funny little bastard. And he goes, come here. And, and I'm like scared because, you know, he was this big you yeah. know, biker dude. Yeah. And he's hugging me and he's giving me noogies and shit. And mm. I hadn't seen him for years since they closed. And there was they were doing the screening of the movie yeah. on the the Warwick Musical yep. Theater at, yep. in, at the uh, Warwick Library or that little yep. mm-hmm. Warwick uh, I don't know Armory, and uh, I took Mike Murray with me. I'm like, you got to come and see this. And him and Al Salzillo were sitting right in front of us. Yep. And I said to him, Larry, I don't know if you remember me, blah blah blah. Oh my God, yeah. And we just kind of reconnected then, and you know, right before he moved. To Arizona, Arizona yeah. he actually yeah. had me because uh, he was a member of a golf club. Um, what's the one there? Goddard Park. Yeah, that one. That yeah. one. Yeah. And he <laughs> had he hired you know he had me book a show there, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he was the type of guy that to your point was uh, you were always part of the family. A couple you know? of years uh, into that, he uh, had booked Jerry Seinfeld yep. at the theater and. Lo and behold, it's coming towards uh, showtime, and the opening act has not showed up. And I get a phone call. It's my birthday. I'm with some friends. We're having dinner. Charlie, Seinfeld's supposed to be here. His opening act isn't here. I need you. Can you come up here right now? Larry, I'm with my friends. Please, Charlie, I, I need a favor. So I rush over. I rush over, and as soon as I get there, the act had shown up. <laughs> and that but, act was Joe Rogan giving Charlie the big finger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but, uh, but he, was a, he was a great guy, and he yeah. paid me anyway. Really? Just, just, yeah, that's the Just to be guy. on hold for him. That's a classic. That's awesome. Just that's a classic. I was at uh, WPRO when he was on promoting um, the movie. Yep. And I was there for something else, and he's coming out of the studio. He says, hey, Frank, how you doing? Hey, look at this this uh, calendar we have. And he's showing me the calendar, and he flips open to a page, and he goes, that's you. That's you. You're on that calendar page. And I'm looking, that's not me, Larry. He goes, no, no, that's you. You opened up for Reba. And I said, no, I didn't, and that is not me. He goes, no, no, that's you. Here, take the calendar. <laughs> I brought it home. I got him on the calendar. <laughs> wow. So, so man, you know. These are all fun stories. I love these stories. And then, you know, several, it was only, what, two years ago you guys did a Periwinkles reunion? Yeah. Show? Oh, yeah. That, that was, uh, so. Now, who was on, who did you guys have on that show? God. Well, we did two of them. The we last one was. Oh, that's um, right. You did do two. Oh, but yeah. the, the, the regulars of yeah. Rick Beretta. We yeah. even asked David DiLorenzo, I think. Uh, Mike, Mike McCarthy. Mike, no, not Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy Mike wasn't on that? No, we had... Uh, Did you have Mary Ellen on? Mary Ellen was on. We had Mary on. Ellen. We had Brian Freights. We had yep. uh, Tom Cotter. Rock and Joe. Rock and Joe and Parada. Yep. Parada did the first one, right? Um, I don't remember now. I don't know if we're he was old. on the first one. I know. That, well, because that yeah. first one happened to be the night before. It's like I was literally on a high. Yeah. We had... It was amazing to have everyone back together. Charlie had brought all of the old... Ca- you knew you made it at Periwinkle's? When Charlie did a caricature headshot, yep. I have those, and and he hung them back up like we did it at the pub on Park, and he hung them back up. It was like walking into a fourth iteration of yeah. Periwinkles. <laughs> and uh, were there people in the audience that came up and said that they had gone to the old Periwinkles yeah. and everything? Yeah. I, I would, was, I would uh, imagine there must. We did two shows and that Mike, night. I that first Mike show Kent. was Mike Kent overfilled. Came. He, he came yeah. the first oh, show, wow. right? Yeah. Because yeah. if he had said no, I don't know where we'd all be today. The yeah. show might not even been happening right now. I don't know. Uh, that's, probably not. Honestly, mm, yeah. he, you know, that kind of launched us the comedy scene in Rhode Island. It really just think all that to end up in a basement. On the Warwick Look West Warwick that. line, in a lead wall with, room, yeah, yeah. With you a, know what? With a fine dehumidifier that costs twelve bucks at, at Lowe's, right. I like that. I That's don't right. know of a better way to wrap it up than well, to, to <laughs> put it like that. Can we yes. do one more thing, though? Please, because what we the way we usually end uh, this you, podcast. Oh, that's right. I've heard so many stories forget? I forget. Well, because you took guys told so many fun and good stories, but the way we usually end the podcast is we ask people if they can think of the funniest worst gig so we've all done shit gigs but like the the gig that is so bad bad that it's funny 
So I've told a story mm. about getting booked at Mickey's in Cumberland yep. for Adam and Eve strip comedy night. <laughs> See, <laughs> right? You yeah. remember those? Well, I, I yeah, I never did it. But yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, I've talked about that, and I'm and, sure you each have at least one. Well, from this year, and then one from last yeah. year. <laughs> right. I the, the worst gig I got was from Barry Katz, who and I was opening up for all the acts because I was Mister Clean. And Barry Katz hires me to open up for B.B. King in New Haven. Wow. On, uh, uh, maybe this is 10, 12 years ago. And I'm about to go on stage, and they say, uh, we need about 45 minutes. Oh, I'm like, yeah. well, 45. I'll Open do it? what I can. I don't know. I think he was in the back doing coke. Well, I'm bringing my dirty doing. material back <laughs> then. <laughs> the curtain's open, and there I come out, and there are... A, a ten thousand black audiences members, black audience audiences members. members, who I don't think can relate to me, who don't <laughs> like me. I'm trying to do jokes, nobody's laughing. Uh, I'm, I got, I had my Omni chord in those days. I'm playing songs, <laughs> and all I can think of is that I have to last forty five minutes, minutes to get three hundred dollars. Oh my god! And I, and I said, look, you people, I got to last forty five minutes, so I ain't going nowhere. And I just went on. Better start liking me. And they just, uh, I bombed, and it was the most, it was more of the most, uh, one of the most embarrassing of my life. Yeah. But I got my check, I got my car, and never thought of it again. So right now. (laughs) Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. How about you, Frank? Charlie's therapist thanks you. (laughs) Yes. Yes. She took more than that 300. Yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I think I I already told mine was the Michael Bolton one. Oh, the Michael Bolton one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've done some bachelor parties that have just been been nuts. Uh, One, I recall, uh, just because of the uh, the strippers that showed up. Yeah. Um, so Isn't that I, I always did. fun when you're still on stage uh, right? and you so, got 15 and more like, minutes and the strippers show I, up? So this was the third bachelor party I'd done for this family. So there's three sons and the youngest was getting married. And each time they had to add one stripper to the mix. So the first one was two, <laughs> the second was three, and this was the four stripper show, right? So oh, they geez. come walking in before I started, and I went to the, the father, and I said, I am going on before they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, Frankie, Frankie, no problem, no problem. You can go on before they do. I said, all right. So I did my thing, but the girls are kind of starting to do their thing too, right? Off so, to the side, yeah. yeah. So well, I did, I did my thing, you know, and yeah. I had fun. I made sure I always make sure the groom sits up front so right. that they will focus on him a little bit. So then I, I just stayed with them for a little bit, just you know, because they had become friends. So yeah. I'm sitting talking to the dad. Next thing I know, there's a naked girl sitting in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, what are you doing? <laughs> Guys are taking a picture. Frank, you goes, prop act. Right. And, she <laughs> <laughs> and that's when Frank's ventriloquism career started. <laughs> so what do you so, think? Hello, everybody. <laughs> she uh, she goes, well, he paid for a lap dance for you. I oh. said, go give it to him. <laughs> yeah. I'm working. Yeah. Right? So she gets up and she's like pissed off right, at me, yeah, right? right? So I, I had to leave. So yeah. I, I went over to, just to talk to the guy that brought the strippers because yeah. apparently Apparently they need a bouncer. Oh, yeah. Right? So there was this one girl that was very pretty mm. and very naked. Yeah. And she came over to talk to him while I was talking to him. And she's like pissed. And he looks at her and goes, what's the matter with you? He goes, she goes, these guys are looking at me funny. You're naked. <laughs> so I looked at the guy and I said, can I take this one? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, yeah, go ahead. So I said, y- you're-, you're naked. Thanks for stepping on my joke. Sorry. Uh, no, that's fine. So, and and I said, what did you expect them to be doing? You yeah. you weren't naked you when you walked in. Look? You got naked while you were here. And she goes, but they don't have to look at me like that. <laughs> okay. I said, yeah, they do. <laughs> that's that's, that's kind of the point. Listen, I didn't choose this for you. That's <laughs> like, right. yeah. No, her father did. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, By exactly. not being yeah. there, yeah. they're objectifying. So it's just like it, it's strange. Some of the stuff that you know. That you Ro- walk Rhode into. Island is the place, though, for having comedians at bachelor parties. You don't mm. see that. Really? I don't you, see that. N- hardly any. You know what uh, is popular in Connecticut is bachelorette parties like to have comedians which really? makes even less sense because yeah. wow. they don't want to stop talking the whole time right yeah. oh yeah, yeah no, not, not the whole time but party. i've no. never been asked mm. to do a bachelor party anywhere outside of rhode island really i've done a few That's in connecticut funny. i did i did one in rhode island with greg johnson yeah. <laughs> wow. 
And huh. same thing. The strippers show up while yeah, you know, you're in the middle. I went first. Ass. He comes up and he's doing his thing. And the the guys are starting to talk to strippers and everything. And he goes into his uh, Rolling Stones bit where he took his, his shirt, shirt off doing yeah. <laughs> Mick Jagger. And I don't remember which guy it was, but one of the guys in the in the at the bachelor party goes, put your fucking shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm looking at him like, wrap it up because we were yeah. using my sound equipment and yeah. I just want to get the hell out of there. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, you're you're halfway through your act and the strippers show up. I, I yeah. I'm, Rock and Joe and I did one. You're and, done. And we, I'm like, I, I literally said to the crowd, I go, look, I could be standing on my head spitting nickels, singing the, you know, the, the Star Spangled care. Banner. Yeah. You guys don't even know I'm here. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, and they did I did one up at... Uh, Blake's is it Blake's, Blake's Tavern, Tavern on uh, 117 over there whatever it is up in uh, Smithfield upstairs and I have the groom on the stage with me and I have the best man on the stage with me and I'm talking to the best man somebody comes walking in the door at the back of the thing the best man flies off the stage runs at this guy punches him dead in the face Knocks him down the stairs, falls down the stairs after him. Half of the room goes out. And I looked at everybody and I said, yeah, I think this one is done. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm just going to take my speaker before the cops show up. Who was <laughs> it? Did you find out who the guy was? Uh, like, it was, was somebody it? that he, the best man didn't want there. Didn't want there, obviously. <laughs> yeah, wow. Holy shit. Yeah, no, I, didn't, I didn't stick around for the police report. I just it's, took off. Wow. You, you could write a, you, you yeah, two you could guys, write a book with the shit that well, you Well, that's why I, I knew this was going to be, the, the, obviously, this is going to be a two-part. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to have This is definitely going to be a two-part. I knew that because, you know, I you like I had said. Much. Yes, you get paid. We've, we've, we're going to double what, what Ace offered you. We've talked to, <laughs> which is zero. Uh, we've talked to so many people, and you guys have come up, and I've yeah. always wondered, like, what... Was there a comedy scene before you guys? And it sounds, you know, it not sounds much like, like the only thing I knew of was <laughs> you probably remember this. I had gone to a friend's bachelor party and there was this guy, Professor Antoine. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. was the only guy I knew. He was a yeah. dirty comic. Yeah. He was this old guy, did magic tricks, yeah. but he had a, yeah. he had a, a like a, a stocking, like a, a nude colored stocking that he had stuffed. And his magic wand was this yeah. two foot stocking that he would pull out of his zipper right. and shake at. And he'd go, do 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 do. That yeah. was how, he, instead of abracadabra. <laughs> yeah. And that's how he did his magic tricks. <laughs> yeah. And that's all I remembered was him and, and I had heard of Tubby Boots. Those yeah. were the, but they were dirty comics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if they never did, like, I never heard of them doing, like, comedy nights or anything yeah. like that. So this so was I really cool. Stephen Wright made it onto the Tonight Show. And then I think maybe again the next week, unheard of. Mm. I, for some reason in my mind, that started the whole stand-up thing again. Yeah. Um, when you when you watch the uh, documentary when stand-up stood out about the Boston comedy the explosion, that was what kind of really pushed them over the top up there too. So you, you're probably right, especially for New England comedy. Yeah. That probably really pushed and them there. And, and he, or Stephen Wright talked about that, how that night before he left after that first appearance, they asked him back immediately. Yeah. 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 And, they, and yeah. he also... He got called to the couch that first Carson night. Carson asked him to write for him. Did and he, he really? said no. Wow. Jeez. And Carson respected the hell out of him for that. For that. And, and it's like Stephen wow. Wright said, I can't think like you. Right. I and think that's like one me. Thing, yeah, yeah. And that's one thing you got to do. If yeah. you're going to be a comedy writer, you have to have that voice in your head. But that, his is a phenomenal right. story. I mean, yeah. he wasn't even supposed to be on the showcase that Freddie DeCordova was putting together. Really? Right. Freddie DeCordova showed up. to His kid was seeing one of the colleges in Boston, called ahead. Yep. Give me 10 comics. I'd like to see your best. He wasn't on the list. Really? He was like the last guy that they threw in. He was doing barback stuff. At, right. Um, the Ding it? Ho. The, the Ding, right? right? Yeah. And uh, he's the one who gets the phone call. And when he first got the phone call, he had the same thought I had. Was, you know, yeah. Oh, yeah, fuck you. Yeah, this right. Is, you know, who's this, Lenny Clark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he hung up on him. De Cordova calls him back, and he says, this is really Freddie De Cordova. Do not hang up on me again. I will not call back. Wow. And booked him, got him on the show. Carson loved him. Yeah. yeah. And put him on, yeah. like, yeah, nobody had ever done that it's, before. It's so but, funny that comedians don't want to believe the person on the other end is who they are, because Mulhern said that about Phil Hartman. About Phil yeah. Hartman. He yeah. said yeah. Phil Hartman called him for the first time, and he thought it was a buddy of his. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you're funny. Go blow it out your ass and hung up on him. <laughs> and, <hung> up on. <laughs> yeah, and then the guy I, yeah. calls back and it's, it's basically really the same thing. You know, because 
because well, I mean, you know, you're not we expecting all have a our hero, little, but we all also have our little insecurities. Oh, of course. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, to think that we were successful in getting something to somebody that would get them to call us, you're going, oh, yeah, right. no, come on, you're fucking that, right, But that, that's the, like the third time we've heard of somebody going, I, have always, I didn't think it was yeah. him, so I just <laughs> hung, like, hung up on him. I know. That's hilarious. Wow. Oh, but th- this was a blast. I appreciate it, guys, for, for you guys coming on. And um, I don't know do you, if you guys want to promote anything, um, Facebook pages or anything you got coming up. You got to promote except for oh, the here it goes. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> except for the following five the Ocean minutes. Ocean State Follies are performing once a month at Via Roma. Via Roma on Federal Hill. Nice. Uh, OceanStateFollies.net. Or you, you can get a hold of Via Roma. It's a dinner show. It's great. When will this thing be airing, by the way? Next Wednesday. <clears throat> Doreen Collins makes a special guest appearance as Melania Trump. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, seriously? That's the yeah, Ocean Doreen State on. Follies. Dot net. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely Frank, done. Yeah, I really got nothing. To yeah. do. Frank, That's fine. I'm, I'm going to be promote? repping pharmaceutical products for Ace <laughs> uh, I will in uh, in September. I will be appearing uh, in the Rhode Island Community Theater premiere of Newsies with Academy oh, players. Nice. I am playing uh, Crutchy, the Newsie. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> Crutchy. <laughs> and they got engineers trying to design actually, the crutch as we like, speak. Yeah. No, I'm, <laughs> that, that joke just crushed with our Broadway. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our, yeah, so our I'll be, uh, I'll be playing Joseph Pulitzer, um, who was a real character. Yeah. Newsies is a Disney uh, a thing yep. that all the kids love. Hmm. So it's me, the yep. 61-year-old guy, <laughs> And a bunch of 17 17 year old kids. kids. That's awesome. Oh, well, you in the kind of like my. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like go. my stock and trade. You get no, typecast all the time. All the time. You can't, you can't I'm, either, help I'm it. either a lesbian or a 12 year old. Yeah. I don't know what it so is. So, academyplayers.net, uh, yeah. I believe it is, but you can find them on Facebook. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we're both on Facebook. Well, I'm on Facebook. I don't know. Are you still on it? I'm still on Facebook. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, you can find us there, too. But I'm sure I speak for Frank when I say that this has been a very mediocre evening of. I am disappointed that the Surf and Turf has not arrived. I know, I know. No, it was but a lot of fun. A lot of fun uh, remembering, uh, trying to remember. Trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> it, it came back eventually, Where's Charlie. Where's my ginkgo? <laughs> it came back eventually. Yeah. You, you caught up with, no, with the rest. But thanks for having us. Oh, no, pl- please. It was our, our pleasure. And, uh, you know, to all our listeners, that's a, a big part of the Rhode Island comedy history that you guys, uh, you know, we, we've yeah. mentioned the names a lot. We've talked about Periwinkles a ton. Yeah. Um, and not, now you know wh- where it came from, where it went. And, and, and really, not one person, including the two of us would this podcast wouldn't have even existed some people might like that but this podcast <laughs> wouldn't have even existed if it wasn't for these two guys in this room right now no, the, honestly the the comedy in this area wouldn't exist no it really wouldn't so we you know we appreciate that, that. Great 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 po- <laughs> i know i know <laughs> Do I get the gig? When no. are the calling? <laughs> when are the calling hours eulogy? again? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. When they reopen Periwinkles, we're trying to get in. Yeah, now. exactly. <laughs> Can I get a Thursday night show? Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week.